Peace of the family. We're gonna go in today. Got my brother King facing the building. We're gonna talk a little dirty today. We're gonna get into the dirty talk. We're gonna talk real dirty today. Information wise, y'all already know. Information wise, you know how we do. We don't we don't deal with no gossip or none of that. We don't do that. We're going, to, we're going to definitely talk dirty, man. It's not for the weak-hearted. Shout out to my man, Franchise, spelled with a Z, dot global. Love to my brother, man. I just came up with a powerful bill. He invoked such a powerful energy that I was I was over there locked in. Like, yo, bro, I'm about to keep building. Then I said, oh, man, I'm, I'm slated for 730 over here. I didn't even know my homie was over there writing in the comments, stay locked in, stay locked in. We good. But anyway, I was enjoying the build, man. You was talking about some real shit that I hope you get into because I want the people that's a, a part of my audience to understand certain things too. I, and I want to get into like, you know, certain certain things that's been spoken of that we feel like we could change on a deeper level from being intellectual minds and men that understand it's a bigger picture involved. You know, that's right. But, but yeah, <clears throat> let's get it, man. So you know, first and foremost. Salute to my brother King Face. You know, we 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 bumped into each other during one of the most litest eras of that particular time in Miami. You know what I'm saying? It's city was on tilt. Was that Super Bowl? What was that? That that was some something was going on. It wasn't Super Bowl. We were just out there. I think I forgot I forgot why we was out there. It was amazing though. Yeah, I had I an incredible time. Um I think it was with Casanova, maybe. I don't know. Or he just happened to be. We was, we was all in the same hotel party. Yeah, all of us. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So anyway, we reminisce. But it was just a good vibe from day one. I felt a good vibe from you, my brother. And I've been, I've been peeping games, and seeing what's going on. You know what I'm saying? But I never got a chance to really connect. I wait for that, that, that moment. So when that moment happened, I said, I'm gonna really stay in tune and really, really start listening to my brother more so because the energy was so positive and so real. And uh, so I started looking. And I see you get a lot of flack because of you, you being a Republican or because you may be pro-Trump, if, if you will, you know, uh, as a Trump supporter. And I just want to make it clear, I mean, you speak on your own behalf, that being a supporter of somebody when it comes to politics is more about the policies impacting us more so than it is about the personality of the person, person. You know, that's, that's what I read from it, you know. And so in that regard, because I'm a man of logic, my logic tells me I'm impelled. Matter of fact, because of my logic, I'm impelled to support my brother. And guess what? I support good brothers and sisters that are you know, Democrats because I don't be seeing that first. I, I hear the message just like I'm supposed to be about policy. I hear what my brothers and sisters are concerned about. And if their concerns meet my concerns, then you got my support. That's just what it is, straight jacket. So I don't give a damn what nobody say this evening. You keep it positive. I'm not going to baby y'all. You can tear my ass up. You can tear his up. Pause. But at the end of the day, you will not be able to deny us of the facts that we present to you. We are not here today to sway your judgment, to make you join a party or, or whatsoever. We are here today to uplift you, to mobilize the masses, to truly be revolutionary, to not bitch, moan, and groan, not to complain, not to beg for reparations. In fact, that's what we're going to have a build about today. So let's, let's get started with that. I personally connected with you at the highest level when I heard your sentiment about our good brothers and sisters talking about ADOs. This is not to give flack to my good brothers and sisters that are part of the ADOs movement. I support you in your endeavor to make things right. I support you in your endeavor to get some kind of restitution. I support you in your endeavor to see if we can get not only funding, but uh, health care and to restoration of our community. I support that. I may not be as zealous as you are towards the means to which end you will facilitate that goal, but I want relatively the same things. But the way in which I'm going to go in that direction may not necessarily suffice, in my opinion, to do it the way you do it. <clears throat> because the way that I'm wired, it makes me feel like I'm asking someone that I'm condemning to give me a hand. And if I have given them, if I feel there's any condemnation that's warranted, 
then that already takes me out the equation of asking them for shit. That's just how I am. If I don't, if I don't rock with somebody, I ain't gonna really spend years asking them to give me what I'm due. If that's how I'm feeling about a situation, that's just me though. You know what I'm saying? So when my brother speaks, I think people misconstrue it like they take it personal, like he don't like them as a brother or he don't like them as a sister. But my read is, it's a mentality thing, and he don't rock with that mentality. When they ask my brother, yo, you're not a slave? And my brother say, yo, I'm a king. I'm a pharaoh. I'm a god. I can't argue with that. I mean, you want the man that's called himself a slave? Like, listen. <laughs> yo, yo, bro. That shit is like, it's mind-boggling to me. Like, you want me to go with that idea that I can't do whatever I want to do. Like, so how am I ever going to do it? <laughs> if I'm thinking like that, like, it just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't compute. That's why when I hear them say certain things, it's to me, it's like, yo, listen, man, I love y'all, man. I want, I want y'all to have everything you want in life. But my point in what I'm saying is you're not going to get it this way. You know what I'm saying? No matter how much you do it, you're not going to get it this way, man. The way you get it is in a weak way. You're not getting it in the way you support. If you, like I gave them that suggestion that you also mentioned, that you that you that you like that I said it was like I gave him that suggestion I said if y'all if that's really your shit why you niggas ain't getting all y'all guns together all you motherfuckers that's talking about you don't want no gun rights you don't want to have guns and you don't want to have this and all that you don't want to have guns but then when you want something that's yours you don't even have the way to get it because you allow them to take it away from you because you gave them that power and then you want to talk about I want reparations motherfucker are you willing to die for this shit or you just want to complain about it so you can't Real talk. And tell me oh I, I, this is mine and i'm going to get it you understand what i'm saying and then you're not doing what it takes to get it the asking is that is that's why when i call them beggars and it's not me to try to insult them but i have to i have to use the word that i know is that's right capture their emotion you understand what i'm saying because i'm not me calling you a beggar is not a lie what do beggars do <laughs> they ask <laughs> they do this that's what beggars do they're Real asking. Talk. <laughs> so it's not like I'm, I feel like you're a beggar as a person, like you ain't got shit. That's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. what, you're, what you're doing is you're begging. So I want to bring that emotion into you. You understand what I'm saying? So now you can start actually listening because that's the most times you can get people involved is by getting their emotions involved. So I, I involve your emotions. So now you're, you're trapped. You know what I mean? Now you, have to, now you have to have the conversation now. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> now I, you have to have it. You, now you have to have it. So now when I, when I say to them, I go, yo, bro, if this is really yours, go get it. What's the first thing they were saying, bro? Nah, it's against the law. Nah, yeah. do this. Nah, I can't do it. I said, but you, you're saying this is yours. They, they already committed a crime to you, the way you talking. So why you can't commit that crime back to them? And you know, you know what I love? When, we, when you talk that dirty talk, you be like, yo, listen, go get it back from the Democrats, for them the niggas who kept you in slavery. Exactly. You know what I'm so, so let's be clear, people. If we want to play this game, I don't want to play the game. I just want to build. But if we're gonna play the game, then let's let's put play this right. into historical context. And historically, if you want reparations, be specific. Get it from the Democrats, because I'm the niggas who over there play and fought to keep your ass enslaved. Those are the ones that wanted you to remain Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution, three-fifths of a human being. It was more profitable for them over there. You feel what I'm saying? So, and I don't care about the other, well, you know, the Republicans only was doing that because, yeah, listen, 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 listen. The, the fact of the matter is, the people who put their blood on the line to keep us enslaved were Democrats. Okay? That's just a fact. It's always going to be a historical fact. So I never really understood it. Once I got conscious, what is this affinity that we had to them? But, you know, I want our people to understand, I love you all the same. I love you. If I don't know you, you understand what my barometer for love is that. You know what that is. So if I don't know you, I got a love for you. I get to know you. I got a different type of love for you. I really connect with you at the highest level. That's another type of love. So my thing is, I love you all the same. You feel what I'm saying? And only a real communion, only a real connection can empower me with the ability of discernment. So when I say that, I say that to say that, listen, brothers and sisters, I ain't set tripping. 
I rock with you no matter what, what type of time you want. And this is the problem. And the reason why I got to make this clear, because people are oh, since Trump supporting because people hate Trump so much. But let me make this clear. Before you can hate on my brother right here, because he's a pro-Trump Republican supporter, advocate, however you want to call it, you had to walk by the drug dealer in the community while he's doing what he do. You had to walk by the prostitute. You had to walk past the pimp. You had to walk past the gang member. You ain't feel no way as you went and got your newspaper, pick up your eggs, milk, and peas, or whatever you do, and you went back home and you said shit. You got here and started conducting keyboard karate. You uh, apparently you live in a world where the people you say hi to, where your your mothers, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your siblings, and your friends are all without imperfection. They are all without perfection. Uh, imperfection, pardon me. They are all perfect. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncles, your nieces, and your friends are all filled with perfection. They are void of any inconsistencies. They are void of any errors. The only person you can find error with is somebody that's of a different political party. And you see, I don't accept that kind of rationale. So, people have this set trip and type of energy like your fam. I came from banging. I ain't coming to consciousness so I can start banging on my people because they want to set trip on Democrat Republic. Oh man, polite is cool with those. Yo, he that's the second Republican in seven days, polite. You know what I'm saying? Like, look. <laughs> Yo, if they cooking, they cooking. But I'm gonna tell you this, I love you all the same. I'm not set tripping. If you saying things that can uplift our people and advance our community, yo. I'm not part of those kind of games. I'm part of the, yo, I want us to come up. But in the end time of us coming up, I've, I, I'm i no good to no one if I'm no good to myself. You, you know what I'm saying? So when, when, when I teach my courses and I do what I do, like when I'm doing this economic course, the, uh, you go to IamBrotherPolite.app for those of you that want to really get this bread during this era because when the economy is horrible, that's a narrative that's being projected by wealthy people who are not necessarily attempting to deceive you. You're just in their business and you're misconstruing their emotion for your very own. It's horrible for them because they pay $200, $300, $500 to buy their stocks. It's great for us because our shit's going to cost $3, $5, $10, 12 or $15. They have to sell to eliminate the loss. We have to buy. But you know what happens? They say it's horrible, it's horrible, it's horrible. You don't touch it, and guess who's going to buy it back? And then what's going to happen? It becomes out of your reach again. You see what I'm saying? So these are the conversations that we need to have because our economy looks near identical to <coughs> the economy of 1929. Okay? And in the 20s, more especially, we recognize this as a staple in American history for the most millionaires that ever been born. So the question is, what were the circumstances or what governed the circumstances of those people that represent a golden era during the Great Depression where more millionaires were born during any economical collapse than in any other era where people were prospering in American history? What was the impetus? And do any of those scenarios or said circumstances look near or are identical to present day? Because our economy hasn't looked like this since that golden era of millionaires during the Depression upon an economic collapse. And so we should look at that model and realize, oh, whoa, hold on. Similar circumstances exist today. So we, if we don't reinvent the wheel, but we put air in the tire, Straight jacket, bro. We we good. We cooking. And, 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 and see what you're saying? You're saying something based on a model that you've seen worked, right? What I try to explain to people, you people are always attacking what works. Regardless if you may not like who how it's done or who's doing it, the fact is it's working for them. What do your right mind think that it won't work for you? You know what I mean? So like even when I talk about Jewish people, I'm like Jewish people probably get a lot of money off of welfare and stuff like that but you got to understand what they're doing they understand how to play the game in the system to make it work for them we could do the same thing you just choose not to do it and just complain on the people that's doing it they're not doing something that's illegal they're understanding how to play the game you understand that's right since we didn't learn so it's like when i look at certain things like and, I'm <laughs> and it goes into this it's like 
on this internet stuff, you know, a lot of the YouTube guys, whether the conscious community or whatever, political, everybody's like going against each other. Everybody's Word. fighting. Everybody's everybody's trying to say, "Oh, brother, polite. He does. He took from this person and did it. Or this, young Pharaoh, he's into this, or he's into this, or this person is into this." And it's like all I keep hearing is that, right? And from my experience, <clears throat> from meeting, you know. Because it, it, I know you have issues with certain people. I don't want to get into that. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to entertain. Oh, no. Nah, I ain't got no issue with nobody. It's but too I, much money to be made. But I understand from, what you're saying. From what I see off in the internet, I'm not because, you know, you, you could clear that up and that's great. I, I'm happy that that's the case because that's very important in what I'm trying to accomplish with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Because, no you know, I, I want us to be able to come together and create a council as a team and really come up with a, a solid plan together where we could actually show something, like me and you were talking about last night, the incentives, like how you showed me the incentive of what you was doing. And I'm like, damn, bro, that's deep. Like, this is the type of minds that we need. You know what I mean? Regardless no if people could look at somebody's history or what people say to them about them, we got to stop going with them. You know what I mean? We got to stop going with the idea of what somebody else tells you about a person because you don't know the situation that person had with them personally. You that's may, true. That's and, true. And, and, and it's easy for them to attack a person that's in a certain stature and say, this person is doing this to me. But I don't give a fuck about that, even if it was fucking true, bro. I don't care. That's not what I care about. I care that you have the mind to be able to build certain things. So even if you did take, I, well, yeah, I did take. So what? Look, look what I put back in y'all shit, though. Look. <laughs> look. I hear you. I hear you. Like, look, nigga, this, 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 this. This is what I'm trying to make niggas understand. It's like, it doesn't matter if he did or didn't. That's irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? What's important is that this man has a great mind. And, I, and I've seen and he went, and I've seen the numbers of him flipping, like literally having a 100 to 200 increase profit rate. And I'm, Real watching, I'm like, yo, this is the stuff that we need in our community for our people to learn and build off of to, be, to build that capital that we all crying <laughs> for. Because at the bottom line, dog, this shit is about money. We all want fucking money. That's the, bottom, that's the bottom line. So we have to stop <clears throat> pretending and try to make it all some kind of moral shit or some kind of religious shit or some political shit. It's all, at the bottom line, all that shit is being done for money. Even your churches, okay? It's for money. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep it real and let's get to the point. I'm tired of the waste of our times with the stupid shit. So let's get to that bag. So when, I, when, when you gave a, a plan and I mentioned it on my last live with Isaiah Washington, you said something that it, it caught me. I'm like, that's when I knew you had the mind. That's when I knew. You said, if we all just get $5 a week, if I just get 100,000 people, I'm going to play the numbers game. 10,000. If, if I just get 10,000 out of the 100,000, you'll be able to accumulate, I think you said like 2 million or something. Wow. Every number. 10 months. In 10 months. I'm like, that's a good idea. We could do this. Because I know there's got to be at least 10,000 people that want the fucking best for their country or their community. It has to be. There's no way that this doesn't exist. <laughs> it's here. And you, so, and you see, let so, me say so this. Now that we know we got that, we know we yes. got that, right? Let me, let me say now, this. What, now, what is it that we got to do together as a team? We, I want to have like a Zoom with you guys all together. We're going to communicate. We're going to get past all the drama. I don't care if a nigga said some shit about you yesterday. That was yesterday, bro. We 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 <laughs> from today. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't I I don't want that conflict because you're a very intelligent man, bro. Like I got so much respect for you intellectually. Thanks, the same way I had the same intellectual respect for Young Pharaoh. And me and Young Pharaoh had a had an issue. Like he said some real violent and shit to me as a man that he know he shouldn't have did. But I look past that because that's yesterday, bro. There's something that we gotta understand as a bigger picture in this in this in this thing that we have to focus on. Because if niggas really mean this shit they saying, then they should be doing it. So this is the way to test who's really about it. Let's see if Brother Polite is really about that shit he talking. Let's see if Young Farrell really about that shit they be talking. Let's see if King Face is really about that shit he be talking. So instead of being a nigga that was just talking, I said, nah, fuck that. Let me communicate to Young Farrell. Let's let's get past that. Let's talk about how we could build and, and make something greater that we could show the people. You know what I mean? Let's let's show them that we could come. If they see four powerful minds of different worlds able to come together for a common goal, yo, you know what's going to happen when they see that? That's going to make them believe. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I have faith in this because these guys who was against each other in many ways were able to come together for a common goal. That's when you know it's real. You don't always know it's real when it's your homeboy you're doing this shit with. You know it's real when it was somebody you had an issue with. That's why even in the 48 Laws of Power, it lets you know your enemy who becomes your friend, becomes your most a loyal ally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So how I look at it is, at the end of the day, we could all become allies and come together as a council. You know what I'm saying? Say, yo, this you represent this council. I represent this. I represent this. Represent this. All right, let's all come with a common goal. And I think the first step is us getting past the bullshit. In order for us to get that to happen, you know what I'm saying? We need to get past the bullshit first. You know what I mean? I, I, I would like all of us that's doing real, sh real shit in this movement that we're doing, for the, because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing, the betterment of our people. We all want the same thing. That's the bottom line. I think that's the common goal right there. We all want the betterment of our people, no matter how people feel like they want to do it or get it, big bro. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is this is what we want, this for our people. So, okay, now let's come to that common conclusion. Now let's come together. Fuck all the rhetoric, fuck the bullshit, and let's be like, yo, bro, yo, yo, Pharaoh, my nigga, I, I like your mind. You got this, uh, your brother for life, you got this, uh, da, da, da. yo, so and so, you got this, yo, Sayonetta, you got this, yo, Jabari, you got this. We, it, it, if, we, if we're really serious about what we want in our communities, like we say we do, then this is how we test them. I already know you're serious, because me and you spoke. I already know what you're about. You know what I'm saying? So I, just like with Young Farrah, I know he's serious too. So I know you brothers, we can come together and we can make some real ill shit, shit happen. But this is how we're going to test it. We're going to see who's talking and who's not. You know what I'm saying? And this is going to benefit the community because if we're not just talking, it's going to benefit the community. And if we're and if we're, and when, if we're just, just talking, it benefits the community too because then we realize, yeah, them niggas was bullshit niggas. It's, it, it, we, we, yeah, they finally let me learn something. Oh, they some bullshit ass niggas. Let's not fuck with King Face. Let's not fuck with Young Pharaoh. Let's not fuck with YP. Let's not let, let's not fuck with uh, Brother Polite. Let's not fuck with these niggas now. Because now we see that they ain't about shit. You know what I'm saying? They just out here talking. They just trying to... Then they could go with the rumors and all that bullshit that they want to go with about us. Go ahead, nigga. We grifters. We this. Whatever. You're, you're certainly allowed to do so. But if we really going to make this change, bro, I feel like a person like you that has a lot of financial information and knowledge... And 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 has proven methods that has worked. You will be a good person in a sense. How I look at it, from my my vision, as a person, I'll be able to manage and understand the money and how we can put it in different places. You understand tax codes. You understand certain things. These are talents that you have that I see that I I've witnessed for myself to be something that's worked. So I would look at you as the person, as the financial advisor. Instead of us saying we're not going to trust our brother, we're going to trust him. You know what I'm saying? We're going to trust him. You know what I mean? The more you trust him, the more that you're going to get the trust back from him. But if you're acting like he's going to fucking steal from you, then why are you mad when it happens? You know what I'm saying? So don't act like that. You know what I mean? Trust him. Let's, show, let's, let's put that pressure on his back. I want that pressure on your back to have to fucking show these motherfuckers you ain't that bullshit they was talking. You know you're what I'm saying? Like, you're so that, that's how I see it. You know what I mean? Same thing with... Hey, hey, just, so, so let me say this. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the show got to go on regardless. So... I don't, I don't live in kumbaya moments. I'm going to say that just to be a thousand of everybody. I don't live in those moments. You feel what I'm saying? But I also understand that you have many of the, many of a number of ethnicities whom we would identify as non-black who, if they haven't come to terms with anything else, they've come to terms on many of occasions that we just can't get up. You know what I'm saying? They get together. Like, yo, I don't fuck with you. Right. Like, America don't fuck with China, but we can look under our chairs and tables and see made in China. So something else is going on. You think America can't make their own tables and chairs? Like, I know factories are elsewhere. I get it. But I'm just saying, you think we can't make some of this, most of the stuff that we have being imported into the country? So something's going on, even when people don't like each other. There's still a world community. But we have to ask this, the means justify the extremes. On a macro, on a microcosmic scale, do we have it in us to achieve greater or equal to that of the world community in terms of their ability to connect with each other despite their differences? So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep it all the way a thousand. If we have a mission at hand, and we are organized, 
We do what we do. But I'll never be part of no negativity because it's too much money to be made and I, I'm too smart to be broke and it costs too much money to be poor. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm going to be missed with all the negativity and weird stuff. All I'm about is putting the work in. If, if there's something I can do to contribute to the greater whole, then I'm going to do that. If the onus is on me to see if I'm going to be held accountable, that's light work. could do that. Because like I said, with the people right here, if you're in my course, <clears throat> press 9 if you're enjoying the course, if you pay for the course. Or press 9 and then type in your sentiment. Because I'm going to tell you, for people who may take this recording, all you got to do is go to my Instagram story right now and look at all my students posting how much money they made today. Because today was sell what you got day. You know what I'm saying? Today was sell everything but your fucking soul day. That's what today was. You know what I'm saying? So we, we was chewing today. We were definitely chewing today. You feel what I'm saying? So I take pride and joy when I can demonstrate that kind of power. Like, you know what? By on the Malcolm shit. Only thing, sell. And then guess what? The whole crew mob by. Wow. And then everybody's posting. Yo, I just made 10,000. I just made 100. I just made 170. I just made 300. I just made five. Yo, I just bought an option. You know what I'm saying? My option going to yeah. turn over to 2,000. You know, I only put 1,200. Oh, my option going to turn over to 3,000. Son, I only put 350. Like, yo, listen. That's the stuff that makes my day. And I'm going to tell you, it takes a great deal of maturity to understand that you got to allow your brothers to vent their frustrations and keep those frustrations if they choose to. But what I'm not going to do, I never want to leave planet Earth with a bad testimony of existence. Existence is a blessing. By any Existence by any form is still a blessing. Like a rose by any other scent is still a rose. So existence, no matter what form it takes on, is still a blessing. So I don't want to take my existence for granted, leave planet Earth, and talk about how the Negroes gave me hell and how the white man was oppressing me. I'm going to get mine to this existence. I went, yo, when I get out of here, I want to be able to say, yo, I was with the baddest women. I want to be able to say, yo, I drove some of the dopest toys on the planet. I want to be able to say, yo, I fucked up six figures one time and still had six figures or more. Like, I want to be able to leave planet Earth and say, yo, there was some bullshit going on. But what I'm not about to do is allow someone to keep telling me to, yo, they rape, robbed, and pillages. Listen, I go in my bag and I talk that shit. I talk it. And I mean it. But what we're not going to do is talk it out of context or out of turn. This ain't, when we talking about the money, don't nobody need to be telling me no shit about hoses and the dogs and if you get those houses, the exactly. white people, I ain't got no time for that when we're talking about the money. When we're talking about history and it's suffice and we're talking about some people that don't know better, we're going we're gonna to have that bill. But we're going to concentrate the time to have that conversation. But the problem is, when we're talking to the older heads, a lot of times, particularly, when we start talking about that money, black people in general, we got this thing, like I said, money's my religion. And for the life of me, people keep saying I worship money. And I, I have to keep clearing this up. The reason why I said money's my religion is because I said if we have the same zeal, if we practice money being our religion the way we practice Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, we'd be in a better place. If we practice politics the way we practice Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, we'd be in a better place. When a person says Judaism is their religion, no one says you're worshiping Judaism because they worship the God of Judaism. When someone says Islam is their religion, no one says you're worshiping Islam. You worship the God that's inside of Islam, Allah. When someone says Christianity is their religion, no one says you're worshiping Christianity. They know you worship God or, or Jesus Christ. So when I say money's my religion, why y'all say I worship money? It's the religion. The, the Godhead of my religion is the black woman. That's me. I say the black woman is my God. I say she's your God. I say she's mine. Everybody else got they entitled to their fucking God. Why can't I get mine? I want to I wanna worship a woman. I want to worship a man. And to worship, by dictionary definition, means to have an adoration, which means deep respect for another person. That's what worship means. I don't know what kind of religion you got, but if you go to Webster or Marion Webster Dictionary, and you can see, it just means to have adoration or deep respect. Okay? So I worship my wife because 
she brought me into cuts. I want to support my wife because each one represents the interval of my individual success because they added value onto me. So it's only right that I that there be reciprocity. It's only right that I create scenarios that's mutually beneficial for them and I. But I put them to the forefront and then my children. So for me, I made money. My religion is a practice in which I learn how to properly worship the members of my family in the form of my wife so I can add value onto them. So how do I get the money to make sure as a man I can provide for my women and children because I want to homeschool? Because guess what? Son, I don't, I don't fuck with the school system like that. I say I'm pro-black. I don't shit on people that send their children to the school system, but I'm one of those cats. I would tell you on a given day, they rape, rob, and pillage us. They stripped us of a thorough, thorough knowledge of self and kind. They cut our tongues out of our mouths. They tied our women to horses and made the horses go two different directions so the child could come out. I'm one of those guys. They made us motherfuckers. They made us have sex with our mothers. They made the brothers have sex with each other's wives. I could put that down one day and say that. But guess what? After I say that, then we got to either bang or resist from something. So for me, I'm like, you know what? Since I'm in my feelings about what took place in history, I took my children out of school. Cause that's how I bang back. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make sure I be the one to educate them so they can acknowledge me as their first teacher other than their mother. I'm gonna be the one they're gonna give that teacher respect to so they don't come home, see me as a dummy, and think their teacher got the knowledge and not, and not to respect both of us because we both missing part of the faculty. So for me, I'm gonna deliver my children. I'm gonna be the first person on the planet to hold my child. I don't want the white man holding my child, nor do I want a strange black man or woman holding my child. I'm gonna be the first one to hold my child, my child coming to planet Earth, and I'm gonna be the one to give that child to the to the, the mother that gave birth. So for me, that's pro-black. People just like talking that shit and say, yo, we need our own political party. Yo, we ain't gonna have nothing until we create our own shit. And it, should people talk that shit? Okay. They talk that shit with me. I do this. I live this. I homeschool my children because I don't trust the public school educational system. You feel what I'm saying? None of my wives can work because I can never be with a woman and she works because I don't want the white man inadvertently paying child support for my children. So that's the type of time I'm on. Now, do I knock anybody whose wife is working? No. There's stepping stones. There's levels to this. We work our way towards it, but it should be a goal. So for me personally, because I say I'm pro-black and there's things I disagree with with the system, I make very plausible arguments, and I make the information applicable, as my as the guards would say, we make knowledge born. So I'm not going to sit here and complain. I'm going to make my life a demonstration of what I believe, what type of time we should be on as a people. So for me, I'm like, my wives can't work. The children can't be born in the hospital. And we got to homeschool our children, and we compartmentalize the curriculum. So every parent, every mother of the household, they take on two or three other categories until we, we load them up and then we also give them what school don't give them. So when I'm homeschooling my child, she gotta learn about the economy. She gotta learn about history of thought from the scope of Brother Polite. Not from someone I complain about every damn day and then still send my children to school to learn from them. So what I'm saying is if we're gonna talk that shit, if we're gonna talk dirty about what we don't like then y'all got to make action. Y'all got to make the knowledge born. Y'all got to be applicable. Y'all got to make, y'all got to indulge in the application of the solution. You feel what I'm saying? So I say all of that to say that, no, I don't like people talking about my children because I don't talk about people's children. There's no video there on the planet. I don't interview women to ask them about other men that I don't like. I don't do that. That's just not the time I'm on. But I don't fault. No man that thinks his frustrations the way he conceives he needs to for his own healing or for the community's healing based on his perception. I don't fault nobody for that. Because whether they do or they don't, they don't pay my bills. You feel what I'm saying? Whether, whether they, whatever they feel about me or other people on the planet, let's never get it confused. I still got the responsibility as a husband and as a father. And as an individual to keep myself alive so I can advance my brothers, my sisters, my family, my friends, and the rest of my community thereafter. So for me, it's never personal because I'm evolved in my thinking and how I feel that I've come to terms within myself. I've reconciled within myself that everybody heals differently 
from the summation of events that had them arrive at this present moment in time. And my preoccupation will never be to change the mind of another brother or sister, especially when it comes to me. Because all I got to do is demonstrate and produce results. So as I always tell people, and I'll continue to say it, you look at me three years from the date that you see me, and you make sure if there's any detractors, if there's any slander, if there's any gossip, I wish everyone the best. But what I'm going to tell you is three years from now, I would not look like three years ago. And that's all I can ask of anybody. And damn it, I don't give a fuck if you look lesser. At least there's a change. But obviously, we want more. And anybody that watches me per three years, the homes get bigger, the money get larger, that talk get dirtier. <laughs> and that, that's the motivation. That's not the That's all I'm trying to tell you, niggas, bro. I'm like, y'all niggas is focused on the wrong shit. That's wrong why y'all losing. Y'all niggas want to hang around losers all day. I don't want to hang Can't around losers. I'm not going to win that way. I got to hang around the winners. When people lives start getting better is when they start getting away from the losers. Once you get away, detract yourself from the losers, man, it's automatic. You start being with the winners, you start winning. And this is why I, I want to bring I want to bring this. I'm not trying to change nobody's perception, whatever. I just want to get a common goal thing going. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Let's do this. Let's do because like you got this program that's going on. I'm I'm about to look into it myself. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you, you got it today. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and I want you to explain that to the people that you know fuck with me. What is it that you're doing when it comes to how you how you showed me how you made this amazing amount of bread and and help other people able to make the same thing? Because these are the type of things that I the information <laughs> that I want to give to my people because this is the information right. that's that matters. You know what I mean? This is the and, and hey, what my brother's talking build about build that money. That's gonna actually bring that what you're looking for, that financial security or even whatever. Like I these are the information I want to hear. I'm not saying his program is foolproof hundred percent. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying at least take the time if this is what you truly want a finance, at least take the time to at least look at the idea. You know what I'm saying? At least look at it if this is what you want. You know what I'm saying? The same way, like I'm like, yo, I want to get some money, nigga. I'm I'm gonna look into that because I'm seeing results. You understand? Yo, what listen, this, this is why I be telling people. Like, I watch my grandmother be extremely loyal to Jesus. Bless her soul. She waited for Jesus to come. She told me he was coming. She died of dementia and diabetes. My grandfather, he died blowing his nose out of his throat. He had to blow the mucus out of his throat. His throat became his nose. Okay? He, too, told me Jesus was coming. I watched their children come. My aunt, their daughter, and I watched her die of cancer. She too told me Jesus was coming. And I'm not faulting anybody. I just want y'all to stay focused. This Jesus thing be like Trump sometimes. So I just need y'all to stay focused with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not looking to knock your Jesus cat. I want you to understand how I'm wired. All right? And as it goes down the line and trickles down into my generation, I have to now ask myself, Am I waiting for Jesus? Because I lived in a very interesting scenario. As a child, my grandmother had the bag, so she paid for me to go to Holy Rosary or Catholic school. She had the tuition money because they was given a better education than the public school system. So I went to Holy Rosary Catholic school in Brooklyn. So I had to eat Jesus' body and drink his blood. Pause. I had to do that. That's what I was doing in, in Holy Rosary Catholic School. And so I didn't know my mom's. I met my mom's when I turned 17. She died the week I met her. I had seven days with her in my life before she would die and be gone out of my life again. But <clears throat> members of my, my mother's family, they were Sunni Muslim. Okay? So I can not in partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would have been considered a, a mushrik that's practicing shirk. That's compounding interest to Allah when he's a hood, or a hood, he's one and alone. He's the only one. So I had to be Sunni Muslim under that time. And then when I'm around my father, he's the nation of the God and earth. Okay? He's of the nation of the gods and earth. So the black man is God. He's the cream of the universe. The woman is the earth. We got to make knowledge born. Okay? So I had three gods. And I remain impoverished. So when you're looking at Brother Polite today and you see that composite of theology and economics and all that other stuff in health, it's because what the world has done to me. 
Because my grandmother would eventually lose her mind when she lost her home from a flawed endeavor or something with the real estate. I wasn't prepared to help my grandmother. And I told her mom, because she's the one that raised me. And her having her children live in that house and her children's children living in that house, which she can no longer do for the whole family. She lost her mind when we lost the house. And my pops left. You feel what I'm saying? So I'll end up being in a shelter, end up being homeless. My sister wound up doing fed time. She, she was doing her dope girl thing, you know, moving work. She wound up doing a year and a day minimum. I had to take care of her son, my nephew for a little bit. Then that was going on. I'm a child sending myself to school. It was it was, it was interesting. I'm showering and my friends and I'm crib. Their, their moms, when I actually use the bathroom, they're wiping the, the mirror and they say, yo, what kind of nigga takes a shower when he says he wants to use the bathroom? But I ain't have no home. And I was treated like a criminal for not having a home. I just want to try to really get context. When you, when, you think, <clears throat> when you think I'm callous, it's the way the world did me. Because people treated me like I was a criminal because I didn't have no home. Like It was my fault. My parents had set up wealth stewardship or generational wealth or a plan for me to enter into this world. Shit was trash from the time I came in. That's just what it was. My pops wanted me aborted, as I learned later on. My mom risked her life because she was told she couldn't have no more children. I'm Michael, she's Michelle, my older sister. They was like, yo, you can't have no more children. For some reason, I popped up. Well, if you do have them, you're gonna die. The shit was just like, get this nigga the fuck out of here. That's just what the game was. You know what I'm saying? But she risked her life to have me. I grew up having problems with her. Later on, I got older. By the time she died, and then my own grandmother would tell me some information about her. It was a lot. And I'm like, yo, hold on. Come my pop, one thing you wouldn't do, he ain't tell me nothing too good about my mom, but he ain't tell me nothing too bad. And come think about it, he ain't really tell me much because the time that he left me anyway. So he never would tell me nothing bad, and he was going through whatever he went through in that situation. So let me, let me, let me really give you a synopsis of what this all means and represents. For one, I had three different gods. And with the three different gods, I remained poor. And even to the point of being homeless, living in destitution, subject to being in shelters. Later on, going to juvenile detention facility, and then graduated to the adult prison of the largest prison colony in the world, like the South. Okay? So that's me. In the middle of this, my grandmother, who's my mother, she dies of diabetes and dementia. Just couldn't, I didn't know how to do anything with that. She lost her real estate. I, I just didn't know what to do with that. My mom, I finally meet her. And when I meet her, I'm like, I, I got some shit to tell her. They, did, they didn't even know how to tell me when I was going to see my mother for the first time when I turned 17 that she was dying. So I had to look at someone that I looked like. Obviously, shit. I look, I look a lot like my mom and my pops. They look like brother and sister. But I had to look at this female rendition of the same and see the dying version. The first time I met my mother, she was dying. So I had to be there for someone that wasn't there for me. And I didn't even know six days later she was going to die. You feel what I'm saying? So to just give you context, that shit, I even attempted to kill myself. Took a gun. I never told nobody to shit in the lot. Took a gun, just bought it for my man. Hammer wouldn't work. I had a whole experience around that game back to hammer. He shot it, that shit worked. It was a hint, like maybe. I'm worth something. I just don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a hit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but shit. I was going through a lot of shit. So when I'm here today, I say all of this now to say that a man's opinion can never tear me down. Because I died when my mom died. I died when my pops left. And I died when my, my grandmother died. I died several times in this lifetime. I ain't going to die again. I can't be killed. That's just, I just hope people understand what I'm saying. So nothing a man can say can make me come out of character, yell, curse, and scream, make a threat, issue a threat to another brother. I would never risk my life like that. I never want to walk around and because of something that I said, have to watch my back because what I said was so egregious, it almost warrants physical affliction. I'd rather whoever talk about me live with those type of demons. I'd rather understand that we are all hurting and it just translates differently through each one of us. So everyone has the right to own their emotions, whether they choose to or not. That has nothing to do with me. I've died so many times. I don't even know how to risk my life. And in fact, you wouldn't even understand what life is 
until you actually have a testament of death. Until you actually have a testament of dying, you can't even fucking say you living your life. Nigga, you got to die first before you can live this shit. So I had to die. I, yo, you don't know what it is to meet your mother the first fucking time. You don't know what it is to be a young nigga walking the block. And every time you see a woman that, that you think you resemble, you go to her and you ask her what's her name to see if that's probably your fucking mother walking. You don't know what that is to be so traumatized. You looking for your mother. And then the years you finally quit, a year and a half later, you meet her and she leaves you again in seven days. You don't have no fucking clue what that does to you for when people think any brother can say something and make me go on my feelings. There ain't no more feelings after that. I went fucking numb when she died because I was trying to figure out why would earth, why would existence, why would God tease me like this? I looked for this one my whole life, and when I finally quit, I finally get to meet her, and she's gone in seven fucking days. And I didn't go to the funeral. I didn't go to the wake. I was so mad at her for leaving me again that I couldn't even fucking stand to see her one last time. That's the kind of space I was in mentally. So when I become Brother Polite, author of 90 plus books, fluent in several languages, traveling the world, at Puff Crib one day, in Dubai with Mayweather, when, when, it, when it comes down to this, that's a hell of a fucking turnaround. So if we was enslaved per the trans-Sub-Saharan slave trade for 1,100 plus years, and then the white man picks up a better slavery model that we like, yo, fuck these Arabs here. Please enslave me, white man. And he gets us for about 500 years. And now we've been free technically for probably 70, 80, technically free. And you want me to go to them and ask them to give me something? Son, I've been through my form of slavery in this lifetime. And if I had that mentality about how life served me, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I had to grab the reality I fucking wanted because it was being pulled from me every five fucking minutes. I had to really decide within myself who I am and what I won't be. I had to decide within myself my level of distraction, okay? My level of discipline. You feel me? To the point discipline dissipates. People are like, yo, you a vegan? Yo, that must take some discipline. It took discipline maybe the first year or two. But when you're doing something and this is what you do, this is culture, this is your life, this is what you do day to day, year in and year out, it's no longer discipline. Because if you discipline, intimate struggle. And if you've been doing the same damn thing from one year into the next, it no longer is a matter of discipline, it's just a way of life. So my ability to interface under whatever circumstances with my own brothers and sisters, despite what they may feel about me, is not even discipline no more. I'm so fucking numb, can't no one say nothing to hurt me. I'm so fucking callous from the way planet Earth has served me. Leave me the fuck alone when I drive my nice cars now and I pull out the <laughs> and I throw that money in that motherfucking machine. Leave me alone. When I want to be around my women and go to the club and turn up and, and I'm buying the bottles I don't even fucking drink, I don't want to hear no shit about I'm conscious. And, I, yo, this is my therapy, nigga. This is the least I can do for my homies vibrating at that level if that's what makes them happy. Because we all been through some trying shit. And if anybody's been through remotely close to what I've been through, shot, stab, slice, a uh, slice right here from here to here. That was for my face. Bullet wound from here. Locked up for murder, then turned attempted murder. Gave me more years for attempted murder than murder. I'm like, shit, this bitch should have died. You don't even know what it is when you're sitting there and you're like, yo, the motherfucker should have died if that's the case. I'm getting more years. What happened? Oh, you ain't died. It's attempted. How are we even making these mistakes in the system? I'm in there. And by the blessings, I'm out. And then your wife, who, who's super fucking ghetto in your opinion, but you love her, who don't, who don't drip any conscious knowledge whatsoever, it's, it's damn near strictly lust. If she come to you, I don't want to see you in prison no more. Be or leave. And if you ain't going to read, I'm out of here. Like, read what? You don't even fucking read. I'm going to work two jobs and I'm going to give you one of my checks. Every day. So long as you stop hustling, so long as you stop banging. And I'm going to do this for as long as it takes. Because I believe you got enough smarts in you to take us out of the situation. I believe you could deliver us out of the situation. So my wife of 22 years, we've been together 12, 13 years old. My wife for 22 years 
said, I'm going to work two jobs. She worked two jobs across the street. She was working at Saks Fifth Avenue, some shit across the street. I'm like, the fact you was even able to get two jobs, the nigga can get one, this shit speaks to a different narrative, but fuck it. I'm coming home, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to try her because she's full of shit. I know she's ghetto. That ghetto juice is still running through her veins. After two weeks of giving me her fucking check, I'm going to be nothing but a nigga, and I'm going to be back on the block. So I take you up on that offer. Turns out she has to catch me pumping D again and everything because she's holding her shit down. Like, yo, listen, I'm out of here. She is my God. I'm made in her image and after her likeness. I became the man she wanted me to be. If she wanted me to be a dope boy, I would have continued being a dope boy. My wife wanted me to be a teacher. She wanted me to be a man that deals with knowledge, a man that reads and a man that writes. So I cannot, I cannot accredit a spook God for what the true and living God did for me. Because when people say Jesus wakes them up and saved their life, that's how I feel about my wife, Aminette. When, when they say, yo, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, Aminette is my Lord and Savior. She's my Jesus Christ. She saved me. She, you know when they can see a piece of bread that look like Jesus' head? And they fucking have an epiphany and they got to change their life. That's how I feel when I see women with afros. Mommy and my wife. And I say, yo, you are in the image of the visible God. And there's no way to God except through them. I came out of a woman and a woman saved me. So even though my mom didn't raise me, she gave me life. So anything I fucking love on this planet Earth. I still got to credit my mom said not for nothing else that she could have aborted me when everyone told her to, to save her own life. And she risked her life to have me. So my whole life is a testament of women saving me through and through. But then you don't understand me when I say I can't, I can't accredit my existence to a spook God because the living black woman has saved me over and over again. And then finally, I've been blessed with four girls as my daughters. And they change all of that dope boy gangster gang banger energy from just one word. Daddy. All my daughters got to do is say, really? Daddy, my testosterone levels drop. All my aggression, all that. A nigga don't hold his daughter Grimey and shit. You're like, what up, motherfucker? A nigga hold his daughter. I'm like, what's up, baby? How you doing? As a vet. Only a little girl can do that. Only a little girl can make you drop all the nigga shit and become something different. Only a little girls could do that. And they gave me back my sanity and they gave me back my manhood. Because being a man, being an alpha male, which I'm a sigma male, that's, that's the alpha male that stands out amongst all the alpha males. That's that nigga, he just thinks so different from the, the group that's already alpha, that he's sigma amongst the alpha. Mm, I like he's that. Okay, which is an alpha male that stands out amongst the alphas. And so, my girls, they done, they done created a scenario in me where it's like, yo, a real man is a man that upon being confronted with adversity, he subdues his passions. Because he's aware of his abilities. So he doesn't have to demonstrate it before the world. He's content with knowing who and what he is. So in other words, if I know I can bang, if I know someone's talking dirty to me, and I know Sonny ain't never shoot nobody before, if I know someone's on that type of time, you got to wonder if you would shoot. I don't have to wonder because I did the shoot. So if I know this is true, it's, this ain't no, yo, let's do an internet poll. Do you think the light is telling the truth? This is some real shit. In those confrontations, there's normally one person wondering what they would do, and it's another person, this is their second, third, fourth time around. And the, the time that it takes for that reconciliation is too many seconds, too long, too many times over. Because one person is already in go mode, and the other person has to reconcile within themselves. Am I going to do this shit? Am I willing to deal with the consequences that come? Have I ever gotten to something that eventually compromise my situation where I was in the society and then how I go back on the street and do it again and take the same risk. I don't have to ask myself if that's in me. I know what's in me. So guess what? 
being a true alpha male, being a true sigma male, is knowing that you would bust your gun. It's knowing that you would bang out. But you are able to subdue your passions. Being an alpha male is the ability to be confronted with adversity and still exercise humility as opposed to demonstrate. Because that's a harder fight. You know you can put hands on someone. You know you can make a call. But you subdue that passion. You, you lower your ego. That's real strength. That's being a real man. Being a real bitch is wanting to kill a nigga because he said something. Being a real bitch is wanting to see one of your brothers incarcerated because you don't like him. That's effeminate. Real fucking men don't deal like that. And that's why we got to have brothers back in the household again. Real men don't mind loving their children. They don't abandon the fucking obligation. They man up to the obligation. Real men. Real men, if they have to fucking beg the opposite sex, yo, let me see my daughter. Even if they have to talk nice when they want to be angry, because you be angry and you speaking toxic, you're fueling a person who already thinks you're wrong to confirm to themselves that they are right for what they're doing. And you may say, I ain't going to do that for no bitch. Fuck that. She on up. So, son, if you ain't going to body her, change and figure that shit out. Because as a matter of does the means justified extremes. I ain't saying she's right. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't agree with none of that shit. But what I'm saying is, as a real man, you do what the fuck you got to do, even if it is demonstrating love during adversity. You do whatever you have to do. You, you make compromise within yourself. You lower your ego. And you accomplish the job so your family isn't in despair. You make sure you don't put yourself at risk and separate yourself from society so your family is not in dire straits without you. So being a man here in fucking America, being a black man on planet fucking Earth, has very little to do with aggression. Has more to do with self-control and calculation, mathematics. That's what a real fucking man is about. He don't, he don't just do shit off assumptions and off emotions. Real fucking men is competent. And they determine what it's the price to do. Because if I have to lay a body down, I got to lay it down. I got to make sure I don't fucking get caught. And I really don't even want to be in that type of equation. So I'll fall back. Because I'm not taking a fucking L for nobody to be separated from society again. That's what a real man on. So a real man say, yo, sir, this nigga went out of planet Earth. I went in. You could literally bump me and I'll say sorry to you. Because I'm going to tell you about suicide. They don't want to commit suicide because it hurts. They don't want to cut their wrist. It would hurt. They don't want to jump off the building. It would hurt. But a brother wouldn't have a problem talking shit to you so you could take him out of this world. Because he can't do it to himself. He ain't got the heart to hurt himself. He got to hurt every fucking body in his path because he ain't got the heart to hurt himself. I'm telling you some real shit. You saying some real shit? Motherfuckers be trying to get out of planet Earth because they quit. So they fucking with everyone in their path and hopes they can take them off the path so they can take them out of here because they ain't got the heart to do it to themselves. So we like a delicious suicide. We'll eat the food that we know ain't no good for us because we really don't fuck with our life like that. You know, you, you know the shit that you eating and the shit that you drinking ain't good for you, but it's a part of you that's suicidal because you quit. You know the people you fuck with is toxic. You ain't making no bread with them. You're only going to wind up in trouble with them. But a part of you is suicidal. So it's a delicious suicide. You know the fucking cigarettes you smoke, you want to take out of here. But a part of you is upset with planet Earth. You feel you haven't been given your fair deal. And you quit. So all your actions is demonstrative of the feeling you have inside where you just want to give up. But you're not going to cut your wrist. You're going to indulge in a delicious suicide. You're going to befriend people you shouldn't. You're going to drink what you shouldn't. You're going to consume food that you shouldn't. But you ain't going to cut your wrist and jump off that fucking building. But you will talk shit to people. And you will demonstrate you're out of control even if you have babies. Because secretly, you don't want the responsibility to be a father. Because it's costing too much money. And you don't want people to recognize the fact that you are struggling, you'd rather someone do something to you so they could just hurt you. They can buy you some time for why you're failing your fucking children because you got hurt and you had to heal. See, ain't nobody slow. This is not a message for no one in particular. This is a message for all of us. For the times we get weak and we create scenarios for us to have the right to make excuses. 
So when niggas is talking to me about this Ado shit and all that, yo, I support you. I'm not knocking your Ado's movement. I'm just saying the type of world that Planet Earth dealt me, I had to be fucking bricklayer strong to the point my spirit would never allow me to really be part of a certain movement, asking anybody for anything back that I felt they took from me. I'm just different. Because so yeah. much shit was fucking taken from me, I had to get it back myself. So I've been doing that for so fucking long, I don't even know how to ask the fucking white man to give me anything. <laughs> Yo, bro, I don't even know how to do that. It's like, what it's not even. I don't even I know, know it that way. I don't know how to do it one bit, my nigga. I don't understand that concept. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why when, when, they, when, they, when they talk about like ancestry and representing their ancestry, I'm like, your ancestors didn't have uh, uh, excuses. When they got offered the 40 acres and the mule and didn't get it, they didn't sit there and bitch. They went and created their own community and their own financial stability. Like, they was able to do that themselves. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, why am I gonna? Why am I gonna sit there and complain when they didn't complain during the time when they really had shit against them? Now that we got everything going our way, everybody want to be us. They want to dress like us, talk like us, do our music. They want to do. This world today wants to be black. Like if you look at what's going on now, this world wants to be black. So at the time where the world wants to be you, <laughs> you can't make it happen, homie. And you want me to listen to this shit? You want me to hear all this complaining all day? And this is what I want to end, bro. And that's why, I, 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 you know, I, you know, I'm a student. A lot of people probably like old oh, King Faces. Just uh, like I said, I'm a student, and I'm not ashamed to say I'm trying to bro, learn too. A lot of you got my support, support, brother. You know, I, and, and that's why I wanted to hear you and and, and speak and even say because I wanted people to kind of get a gist of the kind of conversation we had personally without speaking talk. On the conversation that we had. You know, Real talk. so it was just like, yo, I, this is what I. This is the type of energy that. I want every and anybody to have, not just black people. You should always have that energy in your mind where it's like, okay, if they won't give it to me, I'm going to go take it or I'm going to go get it. Like, that should be the mentality. That's all I, know. I don't want to hear the, we're just going to sit here waiting, complaining, kubaya and hoping. I don't, got time for, I don't got time for hope. You know what I'm saying? We've been doing hope for the last 60, 70 years, and we haven't been in a better position. So let's try another tactic. Like you said, something that was key that I, I, I was great. It's like, why would you want me to come do 19 fucking 60 ideas for 20, 2020? <laughs> like, we live in two different fucking times, dog. We live in two <laughs> different times. Yeah, the same strategy. You understand what I'm saying? We live in two different times. So how are we going off of that old, outdated strategy in these new times? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't Sorry. add up. It's like True somebody story. doesn't understand about catching up with like the, the internet and the phone. Everybody's like, oh, niggas be the internet and the phone. Donald Trump is tweeting. He understand the times. That's the thing that people don't understand. Like y'all like, oh, he's tweeting. Like, but you're watching and you're reading it. He understands the time. You understand what I'm saying? It's not about, oh, I used to do it this way and we're going to keep doing it that way. Then you're going to get left behind. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Like, hey, look, we, we, I just saw, I just saw somebody say I'm a 14 year old and I get everything y'all saying. That's powerful. That's real. I just saw somebody write that. They said they 14 years old and they get everything. And part of my profanity, man, I don't normally, uh, be on that type of time. You know, I, I'm, I'm over here rocking out my, my wife's mom's, you know, and she hearing me turn up. You know what I'm saying? My wife gonna have to write that. But you know. At, well, but at least I'm I'm talking but about her daughter. That energy has to be reciprocated though too, because I think that shows our, in, in many ways, the frustration that we have in with what's going on. And I'm frustrated, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I'm I'm very Son. frustrated. I'm very annoyed with it, and I I try to. I'm frustrated I, with my people. I, I I'm, not, I'm gonna be honest, and, and I'm gonna say this from even the people that watch me. Like, I'm gonna be honest. Like, you know, sometimes I like to always feel like nothing bothers me. You know what I mean? I like to. I like to portray that in many ways. Like, nothing bothers me. But the reality is, that shit bothers me. And it's like, I, my brain, it gets to a point where I can't think of nothing else. It's just like, it's just, it bothers me so much, it has become a stress. That I, I want to be able to relieve this stress. And the only way I know how to relieve this stress is putting in the work to relieve it. You yes. understand what I'm saying? So, I, I'm so stressed. Like, that's why I'm tired of hearing the bickering back and forth. I'm tired of the internet bullshit. I'm tired of Real all talk. that, bro. I just want us to come together. Let's figure a plan. You know, I'm not telling nobody to be friends. 
I'm not telling nobody nothing, man. We could we could we could solidify our names by what we put out there in our communities to show that we legacy. actually want to change. Wow, legacy. You know, it's yep. about the let that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. About legacy. You know what I'm saying? We should all leave with a legacy like, yo, these brothers may have differences, but they was able to do this. That's powerful. You know what I'm saying? Especially for the mind of of of, of the future generations to see that that yo, I don't gotta go back and kill that man. I can actually talk to him. You know what I mean? And compromise and use my angel. Like you said, a real man could set aside their emotions and their egos. True and story. Be some real shit. That's so, manhood. So, and I know that you're a real man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a you're real a real man, man too, my brother, because it takes a lot for you to be like, yo, bring unity. Normally, when someone talking that shit, I say you sound like a sucker. I promise you, I can send you videos. But I'm like, I don't fuck with that shit. You sound stupid. But because you a real Sigma male, I have to fall back and be like, you talking about what used to sound like kumbaya to me, but you're not a sucker. And you stand firm in your convictions. So when you say it, I just recognize what you're saying. Because any other person, I would tell them, yo, some be on a different time. I hear you. Boom. But I know you thinking about a, a larger picture. Some people just be like, let's unify. I'm like, for what? What are we talking about doing? You know, because we got to be talking about doing something. So now we talking about doing something. I, I would be remiss if I turn around and don't acknowledge the fact that the people need it. Any way, anywhere we could get it. I'm good. Because like I said, I've been through too much to have the chitter chatter of anybody make me feel a way. That is not said to undermine anybody. That's just to say in my world, like, yo, listen, can't no one say anything to hurt me. I've been hurt. You you haven't been hurt until your mom died the day, seven days from the time you meet her when you turn 17. I've been shot and the pain from that still impacts me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you gotta live with the bullet in you because if you take it out, you die. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta make sure that shit hopefully one day don't hit an organ or start traveling somewhere, but we just can't pull it out. The shit gotta stay in your head. You know what I'm saying? We pull it out, you're done, your brain back. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just too much. My pop left me on my birthday, King, okay? when I was eight. He left. I was expecting my pops to come home and he didn't come back. You dig what I'm saying? My pop was suffering from alcoholism. He beat us for no reason. My sister would dry snitch. I wouldn't because I was already short one parent. I didn't want to lose two. So I wouldn't say nothing to get him in trouble because I just took my ass whippings, though they were unfair and due to him drinking, him getting violent. I'd rather have my pops in my life. So I took the ass whipping. My sister was just different. I was mad at her when the nigga left. You feel what I'm saying? This is the type of conflict a nigga grew up with. You feel what I'm saying? So what the fuck can someone say about it? Nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, why I feel like if you're trying to hurt my feelings, I don't even have none. You know what I'm saying? Like when it when it comes to stupid shit, I don't even want to tell me, yo, yo, bro, you know, can, can you just see if you can let that go to the side? It it never even it never even came at me. It never even penetrated. It never went in. It never registered. It never resonated because that shit is fluff compared to real shit a nigga been through. I I have one of my friends. My second best friend. You know, when you're young, you think you're going to grow up and live and, and be best friends straight into your adulthood. You know what I'm saying? I had two best friends. But one of them was murdered right next to me. Wow. Headshot. I'm not even in the army, son. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the hood. This is real shit. So that's just incredibly too much to take on in one life. Yo, and, I, I, and I'm going to tell niggas all the time. I tell niggas, yo, I ain't all the way up here. And you know what they say about smart people? The niggas crazy, right? So my shit translates into me being a savage, always reading and studying the whole fucking day. Yo, brothers and sisters be around me. My, my wives, they go to sleep. They wake up. My children go to sleep. They wake up. I'm still over here with like six, seven different books. I got the etymological dictionary here. I got first edition Black Wells dictionary over here. I got 10 windows fucking open up on my computer, two open up on my phone. I'm reading this book about religion here, dictionary over here. I'm all over the place because I just feel like the more you learn, the less you know. And I've been lied to so much in my life, so many times in my life. Like, yo, son, I showed you something. I showed you from one of my businesses what I got going on, right? And, and we was able to clearly see. In two weeks, I made more than a uh, policeman. I made more than uh, fire major, <clears throat> a fire a teacher in two weeks. And, and, and I say, yo, do I, I ain't got to take shit from nobody. But guess what? I said that to you in confidence, show you that in confidence, because we was just vibing so much. You ain't asked for it. It was just the spirit. I was like, yo, let me show you this. Because I ain't just show you that to show you that. I show you that 
as an introduction to, yo, let me show you how to get some bread this way if you're not familiar with it. If this is something that you don't know, I can impart this wisdom because I'm good at this. So that's why I showed it to you. I didn't show it to you to, no, to show I, you. I, I know, I'm the energy you were showing it to me on. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I showed it to you to say, yo, we, let's have a bill so I can show you how to do this right here. Because this, I'm great at this shit right here. And, and there's, there's room to teach this because it won't get in my way because they don't take money off of my, they don't take food off my plate and don't take money out my pocket if you know what I know. It just, the, the world's just not like that. There's billions of us on the planet. There ain't no need for us to scrape and scrap to fight over the same two, 300 people. We could. You know what I'm saying? We could. So I'm just like, yo, I'm so far above and beyond the fuck shit that when I'm almost insulted when someone asks me if I can, if, you know, what, when people do this, people gonna be like, yo, why can't you brothers just get along? And I'd be like, yo, I, I normally get flustered when people do that. Because then I always ask this. Yo, you see any videos I got up? You see me put anybody name in my shit? I'm, I'm, I'm committed to what I do. I just always ask. When people, yo, don't put me in the equation. I know people mean well. When they be like, yo, can we, can y'all brother, yo, stop with that y'all shit. Because look at my content. Look down the line. So video, the first one you see, go as many videos as you possibly can go down. You don't see no responses or nothing. You don't see none of that. Go to my Facebook. Go to my Instagram. Go, I don't got memes on nobody. I don't do videos on nobody. I don't talk about nobody. Because if I take that type of time, if I took two hours out of my time to talk about another nigga, I took two hours out of my daughter's life. Pick one. If I take two hours to talk about another brother, I'm taking two hours out of one of my wife's life. Pick one of four. If I take two hours out of my time to do some shit about gossiping and talking about another brother, I done took two hours out of two women who I'm courting. If I take two hours out of my life to talk about any other man, I took two hours off of work to make money to contribute to my family. So that's an insult to anybody that entrusts me in any kind of relationship, whether it's, it's daddy, daughter, or whether it's husband and wife. It's an insult to their intelligence for me to take time out of my relationship or my opportunities to degrade another black man or any man for that matter. I'm just on a different time, King. That's so that's why I'm being insulted. That's why I'm like, so waste my time with that shit. And, and this, when I'm on camera, it's for the upliftment and development of my people. If I'm doing that, I'm doing my community a service so no one can complain about me not spending time with them. But if I spend the time to talk wicked about another person, then everyone has the right to complain why I wasn't being a father during those hours or a husband during those hours or a businessman during those hours. Because nothing can be gained from that but dissension, chaos, and conflict and the necessity to have to watch my back because maybe someone was having such a bad day that I finally said that last thing that took them over the top and and there we go now I got now I gotta I gotta watch myself I don't want to walk these streets and never have to watch myself everywhere I go I go with my you know that's why I wanted to have that conversation I'm so happy I did because it makes me have a full understanding of where we could go you know what I'm saying and I want to <laughs> Like I, like I said, we just, you know, the, the, rest, no of this conversation, this, the rest of this conversation is, is ending because I just want to, we're going to have right. that personal conversation because I, I just want to give an overview just so people could kind of get an idea of why I mm -hmm. fuck with you. I want people to see why I fuck with you. Not, not for the, what they look at. It's like, nah, I want, I want y'all to see why I fuck with this man. Regardless if you look at me like, oh, why does he fuck with polite? You know, I got a lot of, I got a, you know, Christian fan base, a lot of them. You know what I mean? I'm not into the Christian thing. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell everywhere. But I still love them. That's what they don't understand. I love them. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, a lot of times, you know, you know, people get misconceptions because you like, and they don't understand. Like when you was telling your story, you was, make, you, 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 it made sense. You were saying something. It wasn't like you was just degrading what they believe in. You were just saying exactly. this is what I want to believe in. You know what I mean? This is what yeah, this I, is I my believe life in experience. Three gods and I remain poor. You know what I mean? This is my life experience. Is that anyway, when it comes to religion, if I believe in three gods and I remain poor and I don't buy into it, you got to say and I understand where you're coming from, even if you're wrong. But That's this, what you is, thing, do this is the thing. I don't want. I don't want nobody to. My point is saying that is I don't want nobody to focus on that because you yes. don't agree with that. Yes. Fuck, fuck all that. Agree with the man's mind and his ideas. This is what I want you guys to focus on. I don't want you to focus on the fact that he, he may have his belief in his way. Just like I don't want nobody to focus on me being a Trump supporter or, or any of these things. Like, hey, wait, things yeah. that are unnecessary or focus on. It's pointless. It doesn't, you know what I mean? There's, there's a gift this man has. There's a gift 
Young Pharaoh, Isaiah Washington, me, every we have a gift that maybe some other people don't have, but we could share it. You know, Correct. What I'm saying? for a positive thing. That's that's just all I'm looking at it as. I don't. I'm not trying to be like I said before, and I told you, I'm not trying to make y'all friends, bro. I just, I want, I want, I want niggas to get to the bag. We don't got to be friends to get to the bag. You know what I'm saying? That's we right, man. Have an understanding, and, and that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm talking that talk. So, so that's how I look at it. And I want people to see why I fuck with you because your mind and the way that you articulate things. We need more people visual like that. Don't look at. Their religion. Don't look at. I don't care if a person's Muslim. I don't care if they're Buddhist. I don't care if they're Christian. I don't care if they're whatever. All I'm talking about is the end result of what we all looking for as a people. You know what I'm saying? That's all. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like that's all. And I think that's the most important thing, man. That's why I want people to see why I fuck with you. That's why I want people to look into your course. Don't be like you ain't gonna go look into the Iron Brother Polite Die at. At least look at it. I ain't telling you to prescribe to it. I ain't telling you to spend money to it. Just go look at it. Go see if it might fit what you got going on in your life. You know what I mean? I'm going to it, not because I I, 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 I I fuck with him, but because maybe he could be right. He might have been wrong 30 the first 30 times, but maybe this time he might be right. Let me just look. You know what I'm saying? And, and just not, I'm not telling nobody to subscribe to it. Just go look at least. You know what I'm saying? Like Just like if, if, if Young Farrah has an idea, I'm going to go look at least. I'm not going to just dismiss it. You know what I'm saying? Automatically, because even a baby, a lot of y'all people don't even know. You can learn from a two-year-old, but you just the information from them because you think because they're two that they don't know no better, and they can't give this type of um information to you. But a two-year-old could teach you something. But I don't even dismiss a two-year-old talking. I listen because I'll be like, you might see some shit right now. Let me hear this out. You Real talk. Me? So you gotta <laughs> Real stop talk. being on that mentality. At least go look and try to see if we maybe this could work for you. If it don't, don't fuck with it. <laughs> It's just that simple. If it don't, don't fuck with it. But the people that do fuck with you, take the time to go look. You know what I mean? Go check it out. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? I ain't tell just like I tell niggas, you go on my website, just check it out. I ain't tell you to buy anything. You know what I'm saying? But if you do happen to see something you like, you want to buy, well, nigga, look, you there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You feel hey, me? Okay, so, face. How, how could they follow you for those who may not know who are new to you? Where can they go to check your catalog or um, if you have so you merchandise? The typical, the typical Googles. But they can follow me on, on Kingface underscore F1 on my Instagram. You know what I'm saying? They could, you know, I, I basically say everything on there. You know what I'm saying? I got a YouTube channel as well. Kingface underscore F1, same name. You know what I mean? So they could go check that out. You know what I mean? If you or they can go on my website, kingface.net. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they choose to do. You know what I'm saying? If they want to learn more. But I, I want us to learn more about how we're we going to help build, man. You know, we, we're going to have this personal conversation behind closed doors. You already, you already. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate hey, you like giving it. me the time, especially put me on your platform. Same thing, my brother. I might be getting some flack. <laughs> it, it, it ain't enough, though. We, we got to stand strong. I know you can We got to stand it. strong in our convictions. And if they don't get the overall message that we've been giving to them back and forth, that is to say, yo, Go with the message, not the personality. Yeah. So, you know, if, if my brother is saying something like unity and the Trump thing got you discombobulated, then you know what? You ain't the people we need to be unifying with because I, I don't even know what I disagree with you on because <clears throat> what I hear that I love, <laughs> that's my priority. That's my main point of focus. You're like, yo, we got to organize, bro. We got we to gotta create a better opportunity for our people. If you hear me saying, look, I ain't sending no, I ain't asking nobody for no shit. I don't know how to do it. I'm, and then again, people be stuck because I see my AO's brothers and sisters think I'm throwing shots. I'm not. I support you in your endeavor. I'm saying the way I'm built, I'm going to get to much of the same results you're looking for. I'm going to give myself way. reparations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm self administering reparations. That's what we call in SARS. The SARS that's destroying our black community, we done made a negative or positive. And we also got SARS, but this one ain't se severe acute respiratory syndrome. This one is self-administering reparations. We, I'm going to get myself reparations, and I'm going to have my shit before y'all even get it from this white man. And even when you get it, it ain't going to be enough. You're going to be dissatisfied because what can someone give you as far as the restoration of our community? What is the value of all those lives that you contend have been destroyed up into present day? It will never get enough. So get what you can. But it's about prioritizing. Like, look. I like a good cookbook about what the white man did and history and everything. But the also, also, you know, I'm not slow. So second grade is dope. I had a lot of good times in second grade. In fact, my, one of my teachers from that, that 
that grade school, Mr. Smalls is now one of my students, which is a blessing. I never saw that coming. I used to make fun of him for wearing African dashikis and, and call him an African booty scratcher and all that. I'm so embarrassed when I see him now. I'm like, yo, what kind of nigga shit was I on, right? But it's a blessing when he came to me like, yo, I listen to you. I follow all your stuff. I'm like, yo, Mr. Smalls? <laughs> like, that's crazy. But anyway, we are blessed. And so for my brothers and sisters there that keep missing everything, you know, I, I just want y'all to understand this. Do it your way. We can be unified while we diversify our liberation portfolio. You know, this is how, if we study economics and know, we realize it's good to have a, diversification is cool up to a certain extent. But we definitely should have at least three, four things on the table. Maybe not OD, but if you guys got to do the ADOS thing and that's really in your heart, I'm not against you because I'm not against it. Get it. And if I reap the benefits from that hard work and labor that you guys is on, that's great. But we all ain't going to be on the same exact thing. And when your shit starts becoming that, it becomes a religion and you turn other people off. So don't turn your people off. You have amazing talking points and things that I'm interested in. And if and they, if do. My contribution, they do. They do. And they if do. my contribution doesn't compromise the integrity of my father, husband disposition, businessman disposition, if it's just something to sign, if, if it's, you know, I'll show up one day, pop out, show you love, whatever it is, you need a donation to keep the movement going, I throw you donation too. Like, I'm with all of that. But what I'm saying is, where my motivation is, is self-administering reparations, SARS for black people. So what I do is I teach people individually because if I can make several people make five or six more figures, then when it's time to do some group economics, it ain't nothing for me to tell people, yo, uh, I need everybody to give up five bands. So you see, one time I did that. I said, yo, everybody put up five bands to get this private equity group popping, right? And people say, yo, what kind of shit is that? You asking black people 5,000? No, I'm not asking just any black people. I'm asking for the black people that I helped make 100,000. And guess what? When I got it and they saw the numbers go up, Yo, this ain't got them confused and hypnotized, but you, you neglect the fact that these are people who, <clears throat> you neglect the fact that these are people whom I coached, who, who, who paid for my conscious advisory, who took my courses, and or whose credit I repaired. I removed all the negative items off their report. I added positive items to their report. I boosted transient experiment, Equifax, advanced score, FIBO score. I, I, I got the, uh, the LexisNexis uh, correspondences overturned along with check systems. And then after doing that, I created an opportunity for them to get one tip of a mail through personal lines of credit, business line of credit, and credit cards, and or a combination of two or three. So when you do something like that, and the nigga got one tip of a mail, and he just was in $80,000 debt, now that's gone and he has one tip of a mail at his disposal in electric money. If I say, yo, yo, I need five bands from, from at least 20 of y'all real quick so, we can, so I can get something popping. You think you think my people, my people, people I'm teaching, you think they don't have a problem giving me five thousand, hundred thousand? So that that's my business and what I'm doing in my world. Because one of the things I want to do in my world is I'm gonna create an island from scratch. It's very cheap. We can do it for about one point two, two point two million. You could just get sand and reeds and shit and make your own little island. And I wanna have a certain product, certain products and services imported and exported from my own island. Cause that is the epitome of sovereignty. You know what I'm saying? So we got our own language. We got our own flag. I'm going to have land erected from out of the sea because when it's erected out of the sea, then you got true sovereignty. I, I know I sound crazy. I know I sound like, yo, this nigga's bugging. But I'm on my shit, so get, up, get the fuck out of my way when I'm doing what I'm doing because it's too big a thought for some people. You do your ADOS, I support it. When I do my shit, you ain't going to support me, but that's okay. I support you because that's building up your meta. So what meta is, is when you give somebody without an anticipation of a return and they actually appreciate it. So you might have your last dollar on you and somebody asking for money, you're like, it's my last dollar, but goddamn, you know what, he looked like he needed it. I don't really want to give it to him, but you know what, I'm going to give it to him. You give it to him and then you see the impact that it does to that brother and you go, shit, I feel real good that it did that. And you ain't looking for nothing else. There's a baby shower. You give something for your homegirl's baby shower. Now you having a baby. Yo, she ain't giving you nothing for your baby shower. Now you in your feelings. That's not meta. You want to build up enough of your meta where you give people without anticipation. So guess what? If my friends or family ask me for bread, I only give it. 
and I'm not willing to ask for it back. I only I don't I don't give loans. I'm the same way. If I give something, I already take it as a loss. I always tell people that. Once you give somebody something, just take it as a loss already. No, no, I don't if want you, you to take it as a loss. Loan. That's why when I tell people I don't I don't lend money. I give money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I same way. Because I don't want to. I don't want you to stop picking up your phone. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then I got to feel a way, and then now you make me think about negative ideas, and then it, it starts destroying my creativity. It's all about keep staying creative. So in order for me to maintain my creativity, I have to refrain from thinking certain negative thoughts and identifying with certain ideas. So that's why I keep my spacing very limited with people that's just excited about doing things and being creative and, and thinking of plans of grand door and, and how we're going to execute it. And, and don't have limitations in their head, I got to be on that time. But if I got to give you something, then think I'm going to get it back. And then these are the, some of the pitfalls that destroy our creativity because now my mind is like, yo, why would you do this to me out of all people? So my mind gets stuck on that. Now I'm not creating. And now I got to go through a whole healing process. It might take 48, 72 hours to let it go because if it stays after 24 hours, generally it's a grudge and it's going to take that much more days to let it go if you keep that shit for too long. So... I don't want to begrudge nobody. So when I give somebody bread, yo, Po, you got 500, you gonna, you gonna loan me? No, I got 500 I can give you though, because I'm not gonna look at it. I'm not gonna look for it after. I wanna live my life. Yo, I'm gonna definitely give it to you. I, stop saying that, brother. Just just take the bread. If it work out, it work out how you choose to make it work out. But what I don't want you to do is think you're taking blood money. And then now, I'm, I, let me be one out of seven people that you that you got money from that you ain't gotta duck me, you keep calling me. Let me be that person on planet Earth. And if I say no, I have family members be like, yo, he making all this money. He living in Beverly Hills. Why he don't give me the money? Because I got goals. Like, look, I got family members that's dead to me. I love them. They dying of cancer. I could be by their deathbed every day. But I'll be doing my, my family a disservice. So what they got to understand from a phone call, yo, give them my regards. I love you. People say, yo, that shit is callous. But what's callous is my children not being able to eat because you did things that led you up to that point in your life where you are disabled, you are sick, or whatever. However that worked out, that's how that worked out. Your life is your responsibility. Responsibility is your ability to respond. You have a respondability. You have to respond to your crisis. You didn't want to be on the, the vegan disposition I'm on. You didn't want to stop drinking. You, didn't want to, you wanted to do that stuff in excess. You wanted to live wild. You wanted to have sex left and right as much as you could. You didn't want to have a contingency plan so the world goes crazy, you have money saved. So because I'm the one that studied for the test, I got to let you copy off of my sheet. And then what is that going to do? I got to help you help yourself. So for me, I can't just give everybody and family money because we're in this crazy situation. But I, I'm not going to hold you. I, I definitely gave my pop some bread. You know what I'm saying? Because my pop don't never ask for nothing. And when I go to my pop's crib and I bring his grandchildren there, you know, my children, my pops always has, for whatever fucking reason, $200 in coins that he puts in a plastic bag that's going to bust. That when we go on the plane, uh, the shit sounds off. They think I'm carrying weapons. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and I can't put it in a regular case because it's too heavy. And my daughter gets this bag. Even if we go back two weeks later, I don't know how the hell he still got another plastic bag of $200 in coins. So, and then... He hides money in my pocket because, you know, I ain't going to take it. Gives my wife $200, $300 like she's some little girl. She's a grown woman. This is what my pop do. So when my pop called me last week, it was a blessing to finally be able to give him something. It was a blessing. And and, and I got worried. I'm like, my pop don't ask for shit. That nigga left me on my beat. They punched yeah, me. Yeah, I know, I know, I you know <laughs> so I felt good because my pop, he old school. This is a man that... He used his cell phone like a landline. He was, he was the smartest man I knew on planet Earth from age eight. He made me commit so much to memory, make me do math without calculators. He put pressure on me. I had to memorize the 120. I had to be on my shit. <clears throat> Ask me what's today's mathematics. And the, you know, sight for sight. But you know what I'm saying? I got to be able to tell him that shit. Later on, he gets older. He leaves his cell phone on a nightstand. He walks and goes everywhere else on planet Earth. He, he has to hear it ring to walk back over to the cell phone. This nigga, it's like there's a wire connected to the wall with the cell phone. Imaginary wire. He, that shit is a landline. He don't want to text. I send him pictures of the girls. Yo, how can I take a look at how the baby looks? 
He don't want to FaceTime. He don't want to use WhatsApp. He damn sure ain't fucking with no Instagram. He don't even know what that is. And he ain't dealing with text. So how he's going to see a picture, the only way I can do that is to bring the children physically to him and leave him there for long enough so he can capture that shit in his head, screenshot in his head. So this is a man that vibes on very old school principles. He has a whole 10 minute breakdown of why texts are fucking stupid. And just call me because I'm not going to spend that time to, to type out those words. And I kind of vibe with him a little bit on it. <laughs> two out of 10 minutes of the wait. So with that, when my pop called, he told me this. <clears throat> you know, he said, yo, Mike, tell me, son, you good? Because if you ain't, I, I can stretch it. But it's going to be a two-week pain process. I'm a, I'm, I'm a little thin, but I'm, I'll make it happen for you. So I said, no, nah, I'm good. That's what my pop always do. I just realized that sometimes I think my pop be asking me, but he didn't know about how to ask. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, I'm about to hang up when I'm done. I'm like, yo, pop, let me you about to be, it's going to be thin for you if you get me. So, yo, what's your weight is? How, how, how much is your weight up? How you feeling? You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, I'm good. But you see, my pop work for these Jews. He does get a little something check, but most of his shit is in cash. So, you know, that's to the advantage of the Jews. So, basically, it's damn near, it's basically you working off the books. So, that does you no good during this hour. You ain't getting no stimulus checks and all that other shit if you're working off the books. And if niggas got you laid off, I mean, it's hard to collect. So I told him this day is going to come. And now this day is here. This nigga got all his paper money stashed on his mattress and all this shit. That shit dwindling. So I'm like, yo. <clears throat> fuck. So he's like, yo, I'm just spending this money, but I should be going back in two weeks. They told us last week, but, well, you know, it'll probably be two weeks. So I'm going to tell myself three weeks. So I'm like, yo, pop, how much you need? He was like, yo, two, three hundred. I said, okay. Now that you said two, three hundred and you can give a thought how much you need. Because I know how that go. Once you say two and you go to the next number, none of them numbers was right. He said three, four hundred. I mean, I said four, five. He started laughing. He said, yo, Mike, you know, I'm, I'm good. I said, no, you're not. I'm going to see you four, five. That's good. I understand what this is all about. How you going to get it to me? Tell your wife to get her daughter so I can send her a cash app for them. What is that? Pop? We're not doing that. Because by that time, you will have no money left. <laughs> Just send me her so I can get that shit off. I send that, and then I told him again. <clears throat> when Monday come, which was yesterday, I got another five for you. And I said, I'm going to just give you another 500 every day until uh, uh, May 3rd. I said, I'll give you 500 every day till May 3rd. Just this way. I, said, I make money every day. I just give it to you that way. I, I would like to give you one lump sum, but it's the way my discipline works. So I'm going to just give you five every day. And... So today he got his third 500. He was like, yo, what the fuck, man? You know what I'm saying? I said, I, I bet your ass happy you ain't, I ain't get aborted now, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I talk to my pops. <laughs> That's how I talk to my pops. You know what I'm saying? The niggas start laughing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, let's look at it. Niggas listen to your ass, boy. So we, we laugh. He's like, yo, you a, you, you a childish motherfucker, man. You're joking. It's so brash. You know what I'm saying? Brash. So uh, we just start building. And you're like, yo, Mike, you got you can stop. You ain't got to do no more. I say, yo, Pop, you got to let me do this for you. I say, you know why? Because this is part of my healing. I had a part of me that was always hurt when you left on my birthday. There's a big part of me. I'm sitting in the house waiting for you. The last gift you gave me was a skateboard and a super duper double loop. I got that on Christmas and then on the, it was a race car track with all the loops and shit. One of those electric shits back in the day. They got that shit going around and going around. It ain't doing nothing special. We're going to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. But, you know, we just hold the button and we watch the little cars fly off the track, put it back on. It was a super duper double looper. And that was me going into my eighth birthday. That was on the Christmas and then August 10th came, boom. I got, I got a skateboard and a bike. He let me open it up the day before the nigga bounced. So I've always hurt. We talked about it quite some time. My pop lived in the crib that I paid for. Boom. And, you know, I feel good. I said, yo, I got my pop crib. And guess what? You know, I'm hitting them off with bread and shit. It, it made me feel good because I realized my growth. You know what I'm saying? That <coughs> as a black man now, as a 36-year-old black man, I've experienced some shit on planet Earth. I've experienced women. I've experienced the hatred from your fellow brother and sister. I've experienced forms of racism and oppression and obstacles and blockades that society has set up. 
I was, I, I've experienced what drugs did to a lot of friends and family. I've experienced people dying from disease. So now that I'm a grown man, I can understand my father more. Should he have left? I always say, of course not. But why he left? Suffering from alcoholism when he told me, yo, I had to get the fuck away from y'all. I was causing more harm than good. <clears throat> I look in your eyes, I can tell you love me. And I just didn't want to eventually create a form of hate. I hear you, nigga. But I was going to take those ass whippings until you got better. Live and direct. Let me help you heal. But he ain't know how to talk, just like he ain't know how to ask me for no fucking money. I had to read and, and decode this shit like hieroglyphics to understand this nigga needed bread. You know what I'm saying? So I'm happy that I'm no longer angry with my mom that's gone. I'm happy that I can experience great moments with my father. You, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, it's real. Quite the and I don't have no reservation. And in fact, me, every time I give him another five, yo, that shit, I feel so good that so I can good. do it. Yo, bro, I know, I know that feeling, man. It's, a, it's addictive. Like, it's like showing love and, and being right and being positive and, and being able to get over that. That's why people say the same thing about me. Like, yo, keep face, you mad cold. I'm like, I'm not cold, bro. Yo, talk. I, just, I just understand the system. I get it. You know what I mean? I can't. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Right. I get it. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I don't get it. I get it. So I'm not, it's not me being messed up. You know what I mean? I just understand certain things that you may not see and it's okay, but this is how I function. This is how, that's what we're, that's why when you was like, I get $500 and that's, I could give him a love sum, but it's because of my discipline. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you said those key things and I hope people don't overlook those things that you said. Like, and some people be like, why you don't just give your pups to 10 bands? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some people are looking like that, but they're not understanding that. You're still giving him more than what he asked for. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You're still giving him more than what he asked for. You know what I'm saying? And you're maintaining a discipline that you do for yourself that keeps you being able to even do that for him. Yo, man. Words out my mouth. Facts. You feel what I'm saying? So people, that's why I don't want you, that's why when people talk, even if there's things you don't like in what they say, motherfuckers say real shit too in the mix of that. So you can eliminate all the stuff that you feel like is like blah, 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 but the shit that Y'all should be paying attention to. And this is why I want me, my people to learn. I want them to learn how to decipher and just be like, yo, let me take what's important out of that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, and that's what's important. Like, people don't understand the setup. It's like, if I give you 10000 right now and I'm not able to make 10000 you know what I mean? I'm still giving you more than what I'm, what I'm you asking for. But then if I keep giving you, if I just give you a little sum of 10000 and I might go through a whole, because I'm a businessman, anything I have to get sued, I could go through all this. So I got to make sure I maintain the balance. Got to pace yourself. You know what yep. I'm saying? So I can make sure you still get everything you need and more, but at the same time, I'm killing myself. So my if brother. I kill myself and you need my help, I'm dead. I can't help you. They got, yeah, we, yeah, we all die. <laughs> you, know, you know the main reason, bro, I don't like to ask people? I'm going to tell you the main reason why I don't like to ask people. Because I never want to be in a position for when they ask me that I can't give them. So that's brother. why I don't ask people for nothing. Because talk that talk, I, bro. I, I got the only way I ask is if I know I can give it back to you. If I feel like if you ask me, like right now, if you ask me, yo, let me hold five hundred, I could be like, all right, I can, I can give you that five hundred. Especially somebody that was giving me two hundred dollars all the that's time right. for my kids and always found a way to give it to me. The times when I didn't ask for it, you know so, what I'm saying? So it's and, like, and, and you know what? Let me say this because I'd be remiss. Me now, I'm with my my wife's uh, mom. I, I, yo, I'd be obligated to get my wife's mom. So it's the best feeling in the world if I could do anything for her. Because as a black man, and I'm here pulling my polygyny stunts and shit coming up, I'm a young nigga, you know, I'm a wife number two and shit, I'm doing what I'm doing. It's like, who's this fucking nigga with more than one woman with my daughter, da 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 Niggas living on the floor, projects, no furniture. Only the children can have furniture. They furniture is the laptops, computers, heat transfer papers, and iPads, and, you know, boom. But watch this. My wife, moms, whenever we needed a little bread and I'm running a little short, yo, I was feeling, I was feeling bad when my wife was able to go to her moms and, and get a couple hundred and keep us on our shit. You feel what I'm saying? I wouldn't give a damn if to her 2,000, <laughs> I'd give it 20 grand. I can never <laughs> give her enough <clears throat> because she could have she could have been like, nah, you want to be in that type of relationship? Let that nigga get it. You know? And even though 
<clears throat> like when I got locked up, she ain't no joke. I didn't even know everything I was charged with, like dismemberment and everything like that. Piece of dude body was taken off from the shot and all, all this. Is my wife when she visited me? She told me all this shit. I said, "Well, you get this information." My mom looked it up. I'm like, "Yo, she's a DA. She's attorney. How, how the fuck she found that?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's the type of mom she had. Super, like, just into whatever her daughter's doing. Like, who are you messing with? Who are you connected with? So with her, there were times. There was crunch times where we got our first apartment and we needed bread. Her moms would help us with the money. There was crunch times. You know, where I was just learning how to be an entrepreneur. I told her quit her job. I'm going to handle it because she did that check shit for me. And I'm like, yo, she saved my life. So I'm like, yo, now it's my turn to help you. But guess what? As an entrepreneur, you have your pitfalls. And you got to figure out how to do it. But the way the ancestors work, the way the universe worked, I've never had to struggle for more than 10 hours out of my life. The money always came somehow. And during that time, she was the reason the money always came so out. Right? And I'd be like, yo, boo, don't ask her for nothing. I got to figure this shit out. She's like, yo, I'm a mother. Polite, while you figure that shit out, I'm going to be feeding our baby. Go ahead and do your thing. I got you. Get in there, tiger. <laughs> I'm going to get this breath to feed child. Right? Child ain't got to solve while you figure this shit out, my nigga. So, you know, I'm like, can't argue with that. But fuck, I got to get this shit right. Because at that time, I'm getting conscious. I'm in the pro-black movement. You feel what I'm saying? And me being in the movement, the type of time I'm on is, yo, we got to donate towards the movement. We got to give them day donations. You know, we got to spend our time and our hours here, listen to the sermons and the, and the cookbook, the lectures and everything. And, yo, that shit had me almost lose my whole family because I was just really neglecting them because I, I, was, I was hyped off of learning and I couldn't get enough and I was failing to prioritize. And now that happened to a lot of brothers. We start getting so in tune with the movement, we can't even be in a relationship. So this movement shit is really for single men. You feel me? It's not really for family men. Because you got to give your wife and your child the attention, you know, and you got to develop that relationship and trust so you can put that time to time in, provided home is situated. So home wasn't situated, and I was spending way too much time into our meetings and mandatory meetings, and, yo, we got to raise funds because son is locked up. We gotta, <laughs> I'm doing all of that. And when I'm struggling, she's looking at me like, Yo, it's like 80 of y'all niggas did deep. Tell everybody put up $5. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, get $300 from these niggas or something. Dude. Get $400, do something. And I'm like, uh, nah, nah, I'm good, I'm good. You know? She's like, yo, you're going to keep going in there. I, I love you, baby. I love you. But you need bread. And these guys look at you like a leader. And you're always raising them fucking money. You're the first one on the street selling some shit to help bring the money in. At least tell them niggas, let you sell the shit and you keep your own individual money. If you can't make them all go around and give you two, three, four, five dollars at a time, you two, two, if this is really your family, you should be able to do that. You know, so I went in, I told one of the leadership, yo, I need to get a little PC. Nah, we gotta give this money to the master teacher. I'm like, yo, son, I'm always giving to the master teacher. Bro, let up on that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Today a nigga need, I gotta eat. So, that was a milestone in my life, too. And I told myself, because I already acquired a certain level of discipline and understanding, I'm not going to blame these men for why I can't feed my family. I'm glad the nigga said no. That might have created a different groove in my mind and made me a weaker nigga. Now I've turned into a fucking god. You feel what I'm saying? Because if I would have got that money that day, I would have went out there and got it. So I went and I created me a newspaper. Other people said they was going to contribute. It been pending. I just became, I just created like six pen names. And I played the law of average. And I went into the New York City train station. I didn't want to compete with the people who don't do it for no basketball team. And the niggas who sell it, m ms and all that shit that they do. You know, I'm just trying to stay out of trouble. I ain't doing this for no basketball team. That shit that they do, that drug you up and you be like, damn, niggas sound stupid. That means you give me $2 so you can stop sounding stupid. Right? So, boom. I go in the morning during rush hour when nobody hustled because one is too early and two is way too crowded. Is everyone going to school and everybody going to work? And I play the law of average and it's like 12 different cars. And if I could get at least 60 people to listen to me at a time, then I, at least if I could go 12 out of 60 of the people, that's not bad. That's one out of every five people giving me a dollar. 
If I get the twelve dollars times twelve cars, I get one hundred and forty-four dollars. On the way back, it's a halfway of the potential because on the way back into downtown, nobody's making no money because all the people that live in the hood got to go uptown to make the money. So on the way back, it's going to get dry. So I'm probably have half the potential. I probably make about two hundred dollars. If I don't, I got to find out how to talk better to get it. So <clears throat> I got so good, I told my wives how to do it. I told my children how to do it. I started selling this newspaper. It's only 12 pages long. The newspaper, I paid like $1,200 for. I got 15,000 copies for $1,200. <clears throat> I sell the 12-page newspaper for only $1. People say, how that shit going to sell? I say, yo, this is about the size of the newspaper people read every day. So fuck that thick shit. This is exactly what they read on a day-to-day -day basis, if not even less. So this is going to sell for a dollar because I'm selling my goal. My goal is to create a store. I said, I'm going to go on the train. I'm going to give me a nice shape up and wear the, the most expensive shoes I got. And I'm going to go there and tell everybody, I ain't crying for money. I ain't hurting for money. I said, people, we have a bunch of nail salons on one side of the street. We have a bunch of barbershops on the other. We are in a conundrum. People have changed their hair. People have changed their nails. We got nail salons. We got beauty salons. Barbershops. People change their hair and they change their nails, but they won't change their mentality. We don't have a bookstore within a 30 mile radius of where we at right now. So what I offer on to you is the first bookstore in our community. I'm not starving. I do have a home. I got a fresh haircut and I got brand new shoes on. So I was making like four or $5 there. I had to learn how to project my voice and go a little harder and I had to time the stops because some stops like Bowling Green to Wall Street is like literally 12 seconds. But then other stops like from 116th to 125th, you got about a minute and a half, two minutes. I had to master the timing, master projection and communication. Then I came out another day busting my gun. I had the newspaper. I said, hey, everybody, I got an article here about milk. Milk has 750,000 somatic cells of euphemism for pus. It's allowed to have 24,000 live bacteria before the Food and Drug Administration takes it off the shelf. And it's also pasteurized, processed, which they use radiation to prolong the shelf life of this food. In turn, the very thing that causes cancer perpetuates the same, and we end up with cancer. The people's like, yo, what? Boom. Oh, shit. I'm over the $12 quota. I'm making $20 out of 60 people in the car. In fact, I came back home that morning from one up and half a down inside of a, just, just going all the way to 125th and back home. Just that one time, I came back with $280. Went home, got something to drink, went back on the train, did it again. Come on, you just rush out. Everybody going to work and going to school. I'm in the middle of everybody. I got the audacity to go, to scream, find niggas' ears and everything. Yo! People like, man, shut up. You got the ignorant people. I don't want to fucking hear it. That shit fueled my fire. And I said, I got to make these motherfuckers feel guilty for disrespecting me. So I had to start breaking it down. Oh, you respect the Eminem guy, right? But that shit has red number 40, blue number five, and yellow number six. But your children take a running start from one side of the wall to the next and bump their goddamn head. But you're going to buy the Eminems, but you ain't going to buy this newspaper that's going to prepare you for the very destruction that is inevitable in the form of ADD or ADHD, which is a, a subjective disease. Meaning, it only is about opinion. They can't get a cotton swab and say, oh, that's chicken pox. They can't do a blood test. They don't get urine. Somebody just got to feel like your child got it. And guess whose children they target the most? Man, white man gave me a $100 tip. Asian woman gave me a $50 tip that day. I barely got a dollar for what I was to. I only asked for a dollar. I was getting $2, $3, $5, $50. So I came back home from one trip up, just one trip up, not even come back. I only took one trip up. I made $800 <clears throat> selling my own newspaper. I still had 10000 left. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? I paid 1200 for 15000 I had over 10000 left. And this is like just day three, day four of my shit just becoming more and more refined. I'm like, I got to get this shit off because I don't want to hold these papers too long. I told my wife, told my children, one of my wives was just fucking phenomenal teaching on the train. It got so crazy we bought our first house in Florida. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we bought this. We got the store. Not only did we get a store, I had four bookstores and one, four bookstores and one restaurant in Brooklyn alone. Had a bookstore in Philadelphia as well. And then uh, we we bought our first property in Florida in Celebration, Florida. And this was all three months from the time I started this idea. You know what I'm saying? So we all moved up out the hood too. We got up out of the fucking hood where we had no furniture because I told my wives, yo, we will not buy furniture for the projects. It'll make us complacent. 
We're going to be in sleeping bags and we're going to stay on the floor. If you don't like it, I understand it. If you fuck with me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. I showed you the metrics. I had a six-month to a one-year plan. I, I succeeded in three months. On the first quarter, we had enough bread to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Real On the shit. first quarter, we exceeded the amount of money we wanted and, and, and did it in far less time. And by selling less product. Fact. So when I say I have four women that I've been with for 14 years, people really got to understand this shit. Like, son, these are not just any women. These are women that slept on the floor with me. I'm talking four women on the floor who just believed in me. I, and people, oh, they only whipped you because of money. Nah, my nigga, they was with me in Brownsville houses, okay, sleeping on sleeping bags, sleeping in sleeping bags on the floor because I refused to get anything nice for a project apartment. You don't know what it is when there's a mouse that moves around every now and then. You don't know what it is when there's a roach. We had mice and roaches. No matter how clean we kept our fucking crib, the neighbors was fucking us up. We did everything to keep our shit clean. I was so, I, I got to the point, I tried to get glue traps and put it all around the fucking walls. Them niggas is like so telepathic and yo, they, yo, we, they, them niggas is like in some kind of boot camp to stress me the fuck out. They would tiptoe over the fucking trap. Sometimes they dragged the trap with them. That shit was a horror film. I had to get the, that shit made me work hard because I had to get the fuck out of there and I felt embarrassed as a man that I got these four women and they're on the floor. So today they see my wives wearing form fitting clothes, got fat ass, big titties, beautiful face, and they like, oh, they only whip you because you got money, nigga. They ain't whip you because they fuck with you. Uh, you got, they all laugh because not one of them was with me when I when I had. They all was with me when I had nothing. When I say nothing, I'm talking mothers come to the house. Where the fuck do you sleep at? Hey, hey, don't go back here. <clears throat> so open up the doors. Well, Your niggas acting like child services in this motherfucker. You a mother or you child services? What the fuck is you doing? Checking the fridge and shit? You know, I'm in the hood. There's some analogies I can make. So they is over here checking everything. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? This ACS? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, boom. Yo, just looking at me disgusting. Don't want to talk to me. Don't want to. I'm like, yo, but I get it. I, I learned I, to how to understand why people feel the way they feel. And don't hold them at fault. It made perfect sense. I I don't want that for my girls. It made perfect sense. But unfortunately, the truth, the elephant in the room is, uh, they're probably here because you ain't really had nothing for them to. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just the elephant in the room. So I'm as bad as you are because we end up here. So what are we going to do with this? I'm not about to let you oppress me with what it should be like because you don't even have that available yourself. So I'm going to allow you to want more for your daughter because who, who wouldn't? And I'm going to mind my business. Just keep me away from that negativity. Or I separate myself. No, why he don't stay? Because I don't need nobody doubting my shit because I'm on some stuff and I ain't about to put that doubt and you destroy my dreams and my ambitions. I feel lesser than a man. Then how do I have the vigor and the esteem? How do I have my chest protrude and believe that I'm going to be able to pull this shit off if all I do is reduce myself to people's opinions and cynicism. I can't do that. So I got to separate. That's just toxic. I got to create. And I got to use the little snares, snarls, and negativity that I heard and seen. I use those optics to be my fuel. So I either can make it tear me down or I can be like, I got to get the fuck out of here. So you know how I feel today when I can look at some of the moms. You need some bread. You know what I'm saying? That's different from my pops. My pops is spiritual when I give him. My, my wife's mom right here, if I do anything, it's spiritual because they, they always looked out for me. But I got two mothers, right? That when I get it, it ain't spiritual, nigga. That shit is just... <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I told you. I told you I was going to be... I told, I told you. you I was gonna Didn't come I tell up? you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, yo, this is just me being real with y'all tonight. My brother just pulling out the... I'm just... I, I'm going into this reservoir stuff that I don't normally get a chance to think about because I'm always ripping and running. I tell you, can't nobody make up this shit like this. This is real life shit I've been through. Real talk. And so I know you want a certain demeanor for a teacher and all this, but you know what? Y'all gotta really know what people been through and type of shit that they gone through <clears throat> so you can understand who they are today. And then you won't even hold me at fault for my inconsistencies or my shortcomings. You'd be like, yo, I understand it. His man got shot right next to him in his head. <clears throat> his pops left him on his eighth birthday. On his birthday, he met his mom. And she died seven days from the time he met her when he turned 17. 
He's locked up in juvenile detention, shelters, and didn't like his island. Someone tried to cut his face. He blocked it. He got the scar on him forever. Bullet shot right over there. Hit by a car. Like, yo, listen. If, and you know what? Sometimes that shit sound like a whole bunch of made up shit. But you know who it don't sound up? You know who it don't sound made up to? Niggas who grew up in the hood. Yeah. Because I'm sure if you start talking your shit, that shit get ugly. And then I probably got, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know how you survived that. You be like, nigga, how you survive your shit? What you talk about? You know what I'm saying? So that's how that be. It's like, yo, we survived. So you can't tell me, watch me bring it back, retrograde. You can't tell me turn around and be part of a movement because somebody owe me some shit. Because anytime I realized I, I was overdue, what was supposed to be mine, I went out there, I created a plan, I execute, and I don't stop until I get it. And if I execute and I come up shy of my potential, I hold myself accountable and say, I did something wrong because this plan makes perfect sense. So it must be something I'm doing wrong. I got to tweak it. That's how I am. If the shit don't do what it's supposed to do, I did something wrong because I wouldn't have arrived at the point or come to the conclusion definitively that this was a good plan in the first place if it wasn't a good plan in the first place. I did the math already. I'm doing something wrong. Something is off. We're not going to escape and do a new thing. We're going to stick with this, and I'm going to find out where the hell I went wrong. You know what I'm saying? How far am I off? I'm going to get it right. That's what I've always been doing since I've been on my own. I never had the luxury to go back into a mama's house or a father's house. Had to be on the streets and get this shit on my own. That's probably the best thing that ever happened to me. That's a fact. If, I agree. Me, if, if I ever had the chance to, to live with my mom, so live with my father, live with both of them, I oftentimes say, no. I'd rather the life that was given to me. As me much too. as I've been here. Me too. Me too. Because I don't know if I was me a sucker ass nigga if I had a mother and father. I probably would. I, most likely, I probably wouldn't be teaching. I'd probably be playing basketball or boxing, trying to be the best I could be boxing. And I don't know what the fuck that turns into. But I love boxing. I love basketball. And I could have been a nerd ass nigga just doing what I was doing and don't give a fuck about nobody. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, I almost get, I almost am afraid of the scenarios where. People don't tell my moms to abort and she don't go through her struggle and my mom and father do stay together and they raised me in a beautiful home, silver spoon in my mouth. I'm almost afraid of that. And when I think about it, I kind of accept that getting shot, getting stabbed, getting sliced, mom died, father gone, beating me just ridiculously because he's suffering from alcoholism. I kind of be like, yeah, I need that shit. Because the life that I lead now, you don't know what it is when you buy a $300 machine to count them. $300 is hard to come by. So when you buy a machine to count for you, there's a number of things that you confirm amongst yourself. One is that it's so much money, I need a machine to count. <clears throat> Two, there's so much money, I had $300 to buy the machine to count money. That shit right there. That's fire. It's the best shit on earth. <laughs> That's fire. That's so, fire. That shit make my whole life go around. Like after all the stress and the hell, right? It'd be something like that to make me smile after all the shit I've been through all these years. I just, nigga, I got a money counter. Fuck is you talking to me about? That it just I don't need much. I'm a simple man. It ain't the cause and all that. It be the damn money machine that be having me like, nigga, we made it. Nigga, you know we made it. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to buy a money machine tomorrow, you hear me? <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> so that's what I say all this for. Not to give you no down story and you can feel for me. I had some trying moments to one of them time about the fucking fire and put it together. You know what I'm saying? I was talking about my wife and shit, cause that, that, that really is big for me. But, you know, and normally she comes, you know, she's walking by, like, don't do it, don't buy it. Switch the subject. She gave me all sorts of signs like the people on TV, like, read the prompter, <laughs> right? So I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, I, I got it. I, I pulled it back. But yo, I tell y'all this because I know y'all are real people going through real things too. You feel me? And I, I want to be your motivation. I want, I want you to be like, yo, I want to have that light that that dude has because it's it all amounts to when the shit finally start working for you. I don't know when the fuck is going to work for you. But stay on that shit. Because the day that you are in that moment, I people say, yo, when that white man take this, he take that. I say, yo, let me, let me tell you something, son. If all my shit got taken, I promise you this, 
If I ain't got no house, no car, no none of that. No money, none of that. Everything can take. You know what my disposition is? Yo, you know what I say? Cocaine is a hell of a drug. I'm like, yo, that was a that was a hell of a sequence of events, yo. I I, I can literally tell the story. Like, yo, man, I had that money. Yo, I, I popped out in the club. I had, I had 20 women pull up with me. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't even fit them all in the V. I had to get a, a sprinter, and I drive like the president and the ghost, and I own this shit outright. I don't own nobody, no money. They say it's rented. You know, hold up, wait a minute. Y'all say that it was rented. Like, that shit, real niggas will go through real shit. I'm like, yeah, niggas, they say that shit was rented. That shit resonates. So that, that shit mean a lot to niggas. They see you in a nice house, and they be like, yo, that's Airbnb. Even in the coronavirus, my nigga, chill. You see me saying shit all the time, over and over and over and over again. How much am I going to rent? You see me put all four white cars in front of the crib. You know what I'm saying? White. Ghost, Wraith, Porsche, Range. Back to back to back to back. And I'm renting them every day to show off to who. Hey, nigga, if I'm renting, it costs more money to rent than it costs to keep. That's a fact. So saying that, you know what I'm saying? You got to put $2,000, $3,000 down security, and then you got to have your $2,500. For one day. So shit is a compliment, but you, the niggas are so slow. They don't realize they're complimenting you. They think they hurt. They think they're saying something negative and they're actually giving me another one up. Like, damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yeah. I've been telling niggas that all the time with the trolls. I'm like, well, y'all think y'all make y'all y'all shitting over. You don't even know you're bigging me up, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even realize you're bigging me up while you're trying to shit on me, man. Word right up. What's up? Yeah, so you, say hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, mama's hi. Look at you. She focused. Look, 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 look. She's smiling. Look at her. <laughs> Word. But, yo, that's the funny thing, man. That's why, like, yo, I'm, I'm mad happy for everybody, like, to get to see the side of you that I see. You know, Word. I don't try to anything else because I think it's important. Because I think, like, you know, you're a very important piece to what could be done for what we need to do out here, big bro. You know what I mean? I appreciate you giving and, me And you know what? Time. It's a blessing talking to you because you actually invoke one of these moments. Because I ain't have this moment. I never had this moment on Instagram. I can tell you that. That whole thing that happened is normally it's just let's get to business. Let's do the knowledge and be up out of here. See y'all next time on the next episode, you know? So... This is really the vibe I, like. I be on. Like when I was doing all my lectures and debates, when I do my lectures and stuff, I go in that bag. I go deep and I feel that thing. I've cried in the middle of my joint because I'm always healing every time I'm talking. You know what I'm saying? Like that's me. Like it's a healing process for me. So that's why I'm like, yo, you can judge, you can say whatever you want to say. That that could be whatever time people want to be on. But at the end of the day, I'm 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 rec I'm still recovering. You know what I'm saying? Like every day is recovery. And I'm going to be recovering onto my last day on planet Earth because this ain't something you could just get over with in any prescribed period of time. And so that's why I said I don't hold no man or no woman at fault if they feel they got to even lash out at me because they got to heal. So if you got to if you got to get at me to heal, boom, if you need some bread and you got to you got to talk to YouTube and get assets so you can put commercials in the middle of talking about me. I'm with it. If you need the white man to pay you as a black man that claims you revolutionary but you put commercials so when you're tearing down your people, you can get paid to tear down your people. If that's how your shit works, then nigga, I ain't mad at you. You found a way to make your bread. If I added value to what you're doing, <laughs> and, and if, I was to, if I was able to help you get some coins because I'm the butt of your joke, yo, people don't even understand. I could take people's videos down just because they're using my image. But I'm not with that. You do it three times, three strikes you out. YouTube takes you down. You, 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 you got my children in your videos. That's definitely, definitely off limits on YouTube these days. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? Let the young nigga eat, man. That's how I be. Because if you really live, if you in your space and you doing what you're doing, certain shit is like, yo, I always feel like if I got to stop somebody from talking negative about me, I ain't as powerful as I thought I was. So a lot of times people be like, yo, you got to erase that. You got to block this person. Nah, I got to keep that shit there. I want people to see what kind of shit I got to deal with. I want people to hear the knowledge that I drop and then to see what a nigga say after the knowledge gets dropped so we can see what we're dealing with here. So sometimes it don't suffice for me to erase something. I need people to see it. Otherwise, you don't know it exists because I'm always removing it. You, you feel what I'm saying? So I need, I need you to hear this knowledge and then see someone still talking about Trump. You know what I'm saying? I need to say this knowledge and for someone to be, yo, he's an agent. He's a, he's a, 
I need you to, I need that. I need that like yesterday. Because what that do for me, I don't need that cushion. That's like if I would have took that money, if, if they would have gave me money when I asked for it, when I was in that black organization to help make sure I could feed my baby and I'm committing to what they want every day for months after months, year after year, that was that was a rude awakening. But what I refused to do because I, I've been having to live on my own, I never had the cushion to go back to a mommy or daddy that kicked me out of the house and I go back to the house. It, it, it woke me up. It was like cold water on me. Psh, wake the fuck up, nigga. You just asked these men to help you feed your child and you about to get upset because they about that man, their special man in their life called the leader or the master teacher. I'm like, yo, you know what? That shit almost make you mad at the master teacher. That shit make you mad at the brothers. Or you come to terms and be like, yo, you know what? My family is my responsibility. Responsibility. I got a responsibility. That's my responsibility. So fuck, I look like being mad that they didn't give me. I'm actually happy they did. And I never was in that space again. I never had to ask nobody for nothing again to, to do anything for me. In fact, I never. I used to have this big thing about donations. I didn't like the word. I didn't like the term. I'm like, I'm going to sell you a product or a service. Yeah. And then later on, I realized, yo, if that's what you do, that's what you do. And when I say do, not D-O, I mean D-U-E. Like, you deserve it. You know what I'm saying? So if you are due that compensation because the job that you got to do, or you got to bust a move, then you do that. Because that's your right. Because you have to fulfill your goal and your purpose. And if people confide in your goal and purpose, but you're the vessel to which we can get it done, then we got to work through you then give you yours. You know what I'm saying? It's just logic. Give this man his. In fact, where, where do I donate to you? Do you got a donation button, my brother? Uh, um, you no, I don't, I, like, I'm, like you, I'm the same way. You know, <laughs> so, you know, I'm the same way with that. You know what I mean? That's why like, I, I'd rather people go to my website and actually get something from what they give me. You know what I'm saying? I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll be fine with making my little 2 $3 per hat that is sold. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm going to just, just yeah, I'm where, where do you get the hat? So I'm going to just buy them. Huh? Where, where we go? I'm gonna just buy a bunch of fucking I mean, hacks. Uh, Kingface.net, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. like, I, like, so that's why when I hear you say things, I'm like, oh, they, they don't understand like the the mindset. That's why. That's what I look at it. Like, I'd rather give a service instead of be like, yo, I need this, I need this, I need this. If I'm doing something like I met, that time that I see you in Miami, right? Yeah. The, the, the real shit, right? I told, I said, yo, I'm doing a GoFundMe, man. I've been busting my ass for y'all all this time. You know what I mean? You see my work. I'm doing, I ain't got no money. I'm doing a go. Yo, I need money to go to Miami. All right? I'm letting y'all know right now y'all paying for my trip. All right? I told them straight like that. I said, yo, I asked for $2,000, bro. They gave me five bands, bro. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And that's just right. showing the fact that they respected the fact that I kept it real. I told you what I want because I've been busting my ass. I've been fucked up. My bills is behind. I'm going through shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, just because yeah. I see me smiling and laughing is because, like you said, I have that mindset not to deal with and allow the things that I cannot control at this moment to affect how I move as I go forward. So I let those problems and I just eat them up and I just keep going. You know what I'm saying? But when I, that showed me a lot. It showed me the appreciation for what I'm doing. That motivated me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think things like that is important for people to understand where we're trying to go. It, it's, it's not about us asking like, please give me money, because I'm not doing this for the bread. You know what I mean? If I wanted to get money, I've been doing what I was doing already, making 5000 a day. Like, I wouldn't even have to already be know. <laughs> not paying no taxes. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? So it's not, a, it's not about the money for me, bro. No it's, more, it's, it's, it's more about the bigger picture. So that's why I feel you when you said that. Like, I don't ask for bread. Like, I would do this for free. So that's why I say, I'm like, wow. You know, that's like how you said. You was like, yo, I did a course for this, but at the same time, I gave a free course after that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because I, th this knowledge is something that I can't hold on to. This is something that I have to give. I can't help. That's right. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? So it's That's like, right. so I don't feel like people should have to pay me for that. If you want to show me the love and do like you said, DUE, then that's that's what's up. But I'm not asking for it. So instead of me just asking for it, I'd rather give you a product or a service. Like right now, I was going on live. We've been entertaining these people for a couple of hours. We done took their mind away from all their stresses. You know what I'm yes, saying? They're not yes. just thinking about their problems right now. They're just looking at like your two brothers from two yes. different worlds that's able to communicate and, and gave us a fucking a time of like through all these problems. We're not even thinking yeah. about nobody ain't thought about coronavirus for the last three hours. Yo, therapy. Ain't thinking about their stresses was going on. And yo, this shit didn't even this shit didn't even time out on me because it's normally supposed to time out at the hour mark or something. This yep, is like that's, overtime. That's really real. So it's like you gotta peak game and I try to tell people like so when you see people are giving you these things, they're, they're giving you more than what your showtime 
channel. You 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 stay too in tune to this longer than you do any show you watch. Facts. And, and that's and your that's favorite what? show. We talking about your favorite show. And, and keep in mind, watch this. Prior to this, I was building on franchise channel. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Going into overtime, and then did this. So when you think about it, and you was on there, and when you think about it, we 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 do this three four hours straight. And don't even realize it till the shit slow down a little bit. We like, yo, you know, we don't watch no shows like that. This, this is you basically binge watching some shit that's live, which is that's like right. an oxymoron, right? Like we binge, right. we basically binge watch some shit that's not even broken down in episodes. <laughs> you know what I'm that's what I'm You know what I'm saying? So I, I try to make people kind of understand that, man. At the end of the day, that's why. So if they want to fuck with me, if y'all want to support me. So support the, the brother. Man. I got, I got, I got shirts. I got hats. Whatever, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we trying to get other products involved inside the website that's outside of the politic wave, so I could yeah, 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 as well. So we working on yeah. that right now. So y'all can just stay tuned, man. Make sure y'all leave y'all email. That's another thing I want to tell all y'all business owners. If you got a website, make sure you collect emails. Make sure you keep in contact with your, your customers, you know, send them emails, build your portfolio like that. Because if you have a lot of emails, you have a lot of people, you can use that and monetize it. If you have a million people that you can send a message to, you can get paid for that. You know what I'm saying? So e even if you're doing the thing, if you have a phone, give me, you know, I'm about to do that same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like where I'm about to, I don't know if you ever watched, um, what's my man named the singer? Uh, he did, He's doing something with his phone where he actually speaks to like a, the, his, his fans and stuff like that. And, he was able to have sold out shows just from doing some thing with his phone. R Ryan Leslie, y'all go look that up because that's some real shit. I just, you know, I really was watching something about the other day and I, I was like, yo, I, I want to share yo, that with everybody. Yo, King, I'm going to get off this shit at 1%. Yeah. I want to make sure we can keep this. I'm going to be right. tight. All right, this so, let me, so look, let, man, listen, I appreciate you, big bro, man. Y'all already know what it is, man, King Face. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, bro, I appreciate you the time, man. Love, you heard? Love. Love you, King. Love you too, brother.